Hey, we go to my Twitch screen. Make sure you turn off your sound on Twitch as well. There we go. Make sure you turn off your sound. There we go. Good, good. Yes, yeah, so turn off your sound on Twitch so that uh, you second. won't be hearing a double. You that? I'm, so yeah. Have an issue with that. Good, good. That sounds working here on Twitch. And uh, one second. Uh, sounds working here on Twitch. And uh, Yvonne, welcome. Samarian, welcome. Or Samarian, I think it is. My friend Yvonne, she's one of your fans. And uh, Forrest from Genocide Squirrel should be coming in here. Awesome. Let me um and uh we'll and then we'll get started here in a few minutes. More people, yeah, a bunch of people are jumping in now. Oh, okay, nice. good, Morning, good, everyone. good. What's interesting is what the amount of people that is showing me does not show up huh. over on the the chat viewer section here. So okay, I, I go to the viewers, it only shows like one or two people, but it's a bunch of people in the room actually. Oh wow! It's always that disconnect. It's always been that disconnect on Twitch. Wow. Oops! Hold on one second. Let me. Uh... And and everybody who's online here, you know, would love to hear where you're from. Kind of kind of chime in and uh, uh, introduce yourself and and share with uh, with us where you're from. Yeah, of course. Um, my name is Tony Washington. I am an illustrator, concept artist, music producer. Uh, out of San Diego, California. I'm currently here at my studio, uh, just outside of downtown. Um, anyone in San Diego, I'm right here at uh, 1835 Studios on Imperial Avenue. Um, so I'm normally here um, most most of the time. I'm not at home working, but uh, so yeah. I mean, I've been in the industry for nearly nearly 30 years now. So uh, <laughs> it's been, been a minute. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. And everybody, yeah. and everybody online as well. No, uh, tell, tell, us, tell us, tell us where you're from. I was going to introduce you anyway, Tony, but <laughs> <laughs> jump the gun. <laughs> yeah. All right, let me go to here. So, Ivy Wizard says hello. Hey. Um. Let's see. Good. Good. Everybody's jumping in already, so we'll get started in a few minutes. Um, and then, why, when you do, when you start your presentation, I will be sending out reminders for people to jump on. Sure. I hear a little chat. There's a little chat here saying from 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 uh, Mars Mars Eagle, or Mark Eagle, Mark Eagle Seven. Hey, welcome. It says hi, Stephen and David. You both rock. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you rock. <laughs> Well, you rock, man. <laughs> Welcome, IB Wizard. Let's see who else is here. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to share the screen pretty soon. I'm going to get rocking and rolling. This is, our, the, this is the Photoshop Users Group last meeting of the year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type into the chat box for, the, for all of my, my Twitch followers. Um. So you can invite your friends and and your and associates to come to the meeting as well. So we're here at the uh, the Twitch TV uh, Chrome Illusion. So I went ahead and placed it into the chat box. So check it out. Mark Kaitan. Oh, Mark Kaitan. Hey, great to see you. He's a longtime member of the Photoshop Users Group. A wonderful artist. Um, Mark. Mark. I know you're having shows still. Um, and I never get any invite about your shows. So um, if anything's coming up, would you please send them to me? And I'll be happy to send it off to the mailing list. All right. Yvonne is here. She's also a wonderful artist. She's, she's, a, she's a real painter. She does the oils and, 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 and acrylics. Yep, I'm um, right up Anthony's. That's, Anthony loves that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I told her she had to be here. All right, so I guess we're going to go ahead and kind of get uh, rocking and rolling here. So, all right, um, why don't we just go ahead and get started? So, I'm I'm, I'm going to um, share Anthony's skin, Anthony's screen in just a moment. Um, Anthony Washington, I think I met him through a mutual friend, Lee Cozy. Yep. 
And um, and I saw him present at our group years ago and saw his talent. And I thought, oh, I got to have him back every year now. So <laughs> now I'm hooked. So Anthony is an incredible artist. Uh, he's a painter, digital painter, concept artist. Um, and you guys, if you have any questions for him, no, put it in the chat box here. Let's get an interaction going. So Mark says, uh, actually, I can actually share. I can share Mark's uh, comments here. Uh, not quite in a while, okay, but uh, we'll tick you up uh, when it happens. Thanks, brother. Love, love you. Okay, hey, you. This is great. Have fun ahead. Absolutely. Yeah, stay, let's stay in contact. We got to do lunch or something sometime. Um, so so as I, as I was mentioning, Anthony uh, is more of a concept artist. He's using a lot of different medias uh, to create his work, from photography to digital painting. Um, and, and he's going he's gonna to share the techniques. He's going to share his philosophy, what he does. So without further ado, Anthony, take it away. Awesome, awesome. Thank you again for, for having me out for the last stream of the year, man. So um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely an honor to be able to do this and share some techniques. And hopefully I uh, hope uh, to be able to add to everyone on the streams um, arsenal for what they do with their digital art and, and all that good stuff. So I'm hoping yeah, that some of this will be able to help with your tool set. Um, before we started, just wanted to, since everyone's joining in on the stream, I'll have this up again for anyone that may have missed it. But um, I have, I'm running a cell for at all the Photoshop users group. Um, members on the stream today uh, on my site. So if you're interested in any prints or any kind of merchandise or original art, um, if you use the code uh, PSUG25, uh, Photoshop Users Group, um, you can go to my site, which is TonyWashingArt.com all weekend long uh, to get any anything you see on there on sale all weekend long. So I'll bring this up again at the end uh, for sure. But I just wanted to yeah, so thank you for joining in today. I definitely appreciate it. If you're interested in anything, definitely check out my site. Um, with that, I'm definitely going to jump into the first piece. Um, let's see. So, um, this is, uh, I'm going to be going over this particular one, uh, in more detail. Um, but I had a series, um, of prints that are on my site right now. Um, all, you know, very vector art inspired, um, done all in Photoshop and, 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 you know, you know, and, 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 and additionally, I also use Clip Studio Paint as well, but. All of my color and all that kind of stuff is done uh, in Photoshop. A lot of the time, my liner is done in separate software, and then I bring it in uh, to Photoshop for color and composite and all that good stuff and special effects. Um, but I wanted to kind of go over uh, you know, a few different styles throughout the, the stream today. Um, so you know, starting us off with this one, um, your, it allows me to, to focus heavily on just drawing um, you know, zero photography work, uh, zero you know, kind of... Uh, photo bashing and all that kind of stuff. It's just it's just me drawing in you know, right on the canvas in Photoshop. Um, so you, you kind of get an idea of, of you know just seeing this. I'll go through my layers in a second, um, but you can kind of see how things will start. Um, you know, it's it's primarily with this very loose uh, sketch, and you know I just quickly lay it in. Um, I have a gel pen that's for any of the uh, Creative Cloud um, uh, members, I, I'm using uh, this particular one right here. Um, it's called, what's it called? Uh, it's a Salvi Inky, I guess. That's how you pronounce that. Uh, but um, this one, or Kyle's Inkbox, um, either of these are available for download. I believe this one's in the, uh, the Spring 2022 collection. Um, and then this one, you can just definitely just search that as well in uh, Creative Cloud as you're getting your brushes. Um, everyone in stream today will, later today, I'll be giving everyone a set of my favorite um, gr brushes. Uh, they're, they're super awesome to give me a link to share with everyone. Um, that way everyone has access to, um, you know, uh, you know, basically they have a, one of the largest libraries of custom brushes I've ever used. But I have some of my favorites that they've posted right on the site for everyone here to have for free. So I just want to make sure that um, later today, um, you know, it, it's available for, for everyone. I'll be giving that code out. So um, and you'll see some of the brushes that are right here um, in, in my uh, my brush palette right here. You see some of those that you'll be getting today. Um, so for the most part, I am very, very loose um, with a lot 
of uh, you know, a lot of the brushstrokes that I do, I try to keep things just loose and simple. Um, and that way I can get, just start to carve out details that I like in the end. Um, I can definitely go ahead and flip this up a little bit. Uh, one thing I would definitely do is just change the color that way and kind of see it underneath on a separate layer. And then I make a brand new layer uh, right above it. And once I got that layer, I can start to go in and uh, just start, start to carve out shapes that I like. And just build from, it doesn't have to be exactly, you know, almost the point where I'm tracing, it doesn't have to be 100%, but just, I use that, that uh, initial sketch just to kind of build the form and lay things out. In fact, let me go ahead and I'll do this one, this entire one as an example. And since this is in a layer, uh, this liner that's in the layer, I have a lot of control to change colors and a lot, a lot easier at least um, doing something like this. And I'll go ahead and contract this. So you make it a habit to put uh, all your outlining on a separate layer. I do. I do. Just for control, um, especially when I'm dealing with like client work um, where I, it's, it's, it's key to have that kind of stuff done. Um, as I, if there's changes, I need to make it easy for me to get access to that kind of stuff. So okay. um, I tend to always do that. Uh, just as a as a habit at this point, just always have everything on layers. You'll see uh, momentarily um, what it will look like uh, with all of the layers from this file. Um, so you'll be able to see you know, exactly what I'm doing um, momentarily. But yeah, and it, normally, like I'll put. I mean, uh, some of my files can get a little uh, out of control with layers, but uh, I've had, you know, files that have got like 900, 1,000, you know, almost 1,000 layers just just because of, you know, either client work or me being very particular about making sure I have this control in general. Um, that way I can, um, you know, just adjust things a lot faster, uh, you know, for me uh, in the end, because if, I've had, I've, I've definitely had, you know, really tight deadlines on some of my projects. So I just want to make sure that, um, you know, I'm able to get through this client stuff fast or even personal work. I try to, um, I try to make sure that, uh, you know, the, the stuff that I'm doing is very, very, uh, you know, cruise control for me. So I'm not having to think too heavily about stuff. I could just, you know, just go in and draw and, you know, knock out my deadlines as fast as I can. Um, you know, cause I definitely want to make sure that, you know, everything is completed, you know, within, you know, whatever the timelines I've got. Cause again, some of my stuff just gets, uh, <laughs> very busy. So which is good. I'm, I'm glad to be keeping busy. Okay, so there will be a general outline of one of the one of those clouds that you saw in there, and then um, I could still take the layer down again. Now that I've got that outline, and go right on top of that again with my a separate shape. And it initially doesn't really matter the color you know that you use; it's whatever your preference is. Um, to, get, to get your initial shapes blocked out. But again, I just try to keep things just loose and if I need to carve stuff out later, um, you know, I, I definitely can. And for anyone curious, I'm using um, here at the studio a 16-inch Cintiq. 
um, just to, to do all the uh, art that you're seeing. I also use tablets as well. Um, and, you know, so I mean, it's, they're all versatile. So it, for this, I just wanted to make sure everyone knew what I was, what I was using for uh, today's stream. So now I've got both of those uh, carved out just based off of that sketch. I'll go ahead and group these together. Um, that way you can get an idea of what it would look like. Um, and you can adjust color as you go. Um, I'll move into the actual working file and that we can kind of get an idea of all the layers and um, all that crazy stuff that I'm doing in these files. So I'll go ahead and open this up just a little bit more uh, so you guys can see, uh, let's see here. Um, so I've got a variety of groups, uh, group folders. Um, I've got color correction, which is in here. We'll definitely go over that. Um, and then uh, each of these, like the rings that I did, that's just, uh, I you know, have a bunch of circles um, that I used a, a layer mask to, to draw out all these little pieces out, I would just erase out the sections that I didn't want. Uh, but they're really all, all you know, a bunch of circles that are completely solid that I just used a layer mask on. And we'll definitely re review that in a second. Uh, so let's go ahead and take this down just a little bit. So we can go through some of these layers individually. All right, so here's all the groups that you can see, which is one reason I say I have a lot, have a lot of layers, but uh, you can get an idea of why. What, and another you know, great benefit of having this kind of stuff, if I needed to animate it, um, since you can't animate in Photoshop, I've got this stuff you know, available so I can go in and do like a, a camera push or you know, parallax some of the art. Um, you know, so I do have that available now that all of this is all basically you know, one piece after the other. Um, I can go in and just change, um, but it's all very simple. With, with, which with it, which is inside of each of these groups is just the base, um, the base color. Uh, then I have like a I have it's labeled fade, but it's just a little bit of blue to push back uh, against all the red. Um, and then I've got the line that goes on top of that, and then I follow it with an overlay um, right on top of that, just to help pop. Um, that liner and just airbrush in pockets, I would just load um, the layer and I can go in and just airbrush, um, you know, just the sections that I wanted to have uh, a little bit brighter. Um, you can go through here. Since it's all one, you can, you know, it's all selected, I can go in and just airbrush. The areas that I want to affect, and you can go in, of course, and if you wanted to darken areas, you can you know, do that as well. Just using overlay, um, you know, just a, one of the many options you can use in layers, and that way you can just punch certain highlights a little bit more and have a little bit more control over your file, and um, from there you can go in and. Uh, well, thanks for the, the, the compliments I saw in there. <laughs> really appreciate it. Um, and then, um, you know, from here, I can go in and just manipulate all of this. So it's the same, pretty much the same type of technique was used across this entire piece. And um, you can go in and uh, just, you know, one after the other, just keep going with the same process of building and building and building until you get to here. Um, I'll add in some special effects um, and so you can kind of get an idea of how I did that. The sun itself is um, layer mask. So the, those clouds, I created a layer mask with the clouds. I can do it again so you, so you can see it. I'll delete this one. And create a brand new one. And just using the same, that same ink brush or digital ink brush I showed earlier, um, just 
Just adding in, but you would change your color to black and make sure your options on normal and or multiply, whatever is easier. You can just draw in on the mask. <laughs> and you have a lot of control to be able to do whatever you want within that mask. So if you didn't like it, you can go back with white. Erase that, like, ah, that was too much maybe here, or I can, you know, add more over here now, go back to black. <laughs> and you have all that control um, to adjust, you know, all of this kind of stuff. So just within, you know, uh, one layer mask, you can have a lot of extra control so you don't have to build another layer. You just use the existing layer to do additional details. Um, so is, is that layer a fill layer of the color that you're putting in? Um, so this this is just a literally added just layer mask. Um, I I'll do it do it one more time so everyone can see it. Um, all I did was just select all uh, right here in the bottom of layers. Just click on that mask um, Got it. icon and then um, bring in default color. Just press D for default. Um, that way you have you know your natural black uh, built in. Um, and then you go in, got it, and just use that that natural you know black tone or, or K tone um, to add in all those different you know clouds that go against the sun. So you don't have to make another layer, um, you know. And, and even though I've got already two billion layers on this file, you don't have to continue to uh, put what, another million layers on top just for you know a quick cloud effect. Um, you know, so just finding shortcuts like that can save a little bit of time and, and you know, hunting down extra layers if you don't label them, which I'm pretty notorious for doing. Um, so <laughs> let me uh, go ahead and bring in some special effects. Um, that way uh, everyone can see that kind of stuff as well. Um, so typically when I'm making a lot of my effects that don't need that, you know, especially for print, um, I will go in and just use just a new layer, swap to screen, um, fill it with neutral color black, and I'll show you why in just a second. Um, and then we'll just label this effects. And I'll move this outside. And then for here, you would just go in and I'm going to use gradient on normal um, just to set things up. I'll boost this up to about 60%. And you can see that I'm really starting to build a lot of, you know, just extra color and extra, you know, vibrancy within this. So um, from here, I am um, now with that neutral color black, I'm able to adjust um, saturation and, and colors even more. So I've got that extra boost of color. Um, but you can go in and slide through colors within hue and saturation um, that, you know, whatever you see fit would work best for you and your and your and your particular piece. Um, at least you have a lot more control now with by, ha by having that neutral color black, black selected. Um, so that's one of the main reasons I do use that. And you can always adjust your opacity. Um, you know, if you need, if that's too much, you can always bring that down. Or if you needed to go back in and change that saturation effect again, you still have access to it. So you can go back and change it down the road, whatever color you needed. Um, you know, so from there, that's you know, one of the main things for print. That's one of the you know my favorite things to do um, with that kind of stuff. So um, once I have that, then I, above all my other layers, I typically put color gels um, and overlays just to kind of tie things in together. And I'll turn this off um, here so you can kind of get an idea. So I really get, you know, even I push the saturation and, and put the focal point on that, on the center of the piece. So, you know, the eye can naturally just go right dead center and then work its way around the piece at that point. Um, you know, so I definitely have that set up on purpose. And then my curve, um, I've got a variety of different curves um, that, you know, that I have collected online. Um, I think I've got, so you guys can go to her site. Um, let 
Let's see. I can add another one. Herbs, and then actually, I don't have all of my custom ones on this one, but um, Julia Trotti, I think it's T R O T T I. Um, if you just Google her or on her, she's a photographer who has a lot of um, custom curves that you can go in and adjust on your on your own. So, uh, tons of default selections. How do you spell her last name? I think it's T R. O T T I, uh, but yeah, Julia Trotti, I believe that's that's all right. Free free presets. Yeah, so um, she's got really really awesome, just you know, presets for curves. Um, all right. I definitely um, recommend checking her out, or at least Google her, and and then she's got like a whole section on her site where you can get um, a lot of curves for free, um, and I use them all the time. Um, she has some really really great um, uh, just presets just to do a what? lot of. What I'm, what I'm seeing here is a portfolio full of photography. Yeah, on her site, she should have a preset area on her site. All right. I'm going to put the link right here in the chat box. Awesome. Thank you. All right. You got it. And uh, definitely check her out, her out. And, um, you know, really, really powerful stuff that can work great you, for photography, digital art, and whatever it may be that you use. Um, and, and, you know, in Photoshop, it, it really it really adds um, that extra layer of just uh, you know, even more uh, amazing color and light um, adjustments just just through, a, a you know, a basic, um, you know, custom curve. It just adds so much more value to your pieces. So definitely check her out if you get a chance. Um, so from here, uh, that's that's the main step. Um, the main steps I would do to achieve something like that, and I use the same technique on this particular piece uh, again on this one, and the one I actually just finished uh, two weeks ago uh, to final uh, to round out this whole set of prints. That's beautiful. Um, uh, thank you, man. Um, I, this was also done. I did this one in a, in a day, which. For me, it's rare to get stuff done in a day, so um, I'm so glad I was able to um, get this stuff wrapped up uh, and get this print series out in time for the holidays. So, um, again, this is part of <laughs> – I saw the – thank you. Thank you, brother. Uh, uh, so this is all part of just, like, my, my last prints for the holidays. So, um, you know, this one's called Fall, and the other one was Set, and the other one before that was Rise. Um, but I'm a big fan of clouds. That's literally my favorite thing to paint and draw um, is clouds. And because I, I really don't have rules when I do that kind of stuff, so it's a lot, a, a lot more forgiving when I'm when I'm drawing that kind of stuff. Minus perspective, of course. Uh, but uh, you know, that's it's it's tons of fun to um, uh, you know get in here and just be loose with art. And um, and by Vaughn, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, so I want to before we move into um, any more of like um, painterly kind of stuff. I wanted to ask if there's any questions with this one before we move on. Um, and otherwise I can definitely get ready to jump into some um, uh, like digital painted stuff with custom brushes. As we're waiting for questions to come in. And, you know, and feel free to jump in with questions anytime, guys, that we, so we can get a little bit of a dialogue going. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I would love to be able to help in any way um, that I can to, you know, go deeper on some of these um, ideas that I'm doing and, and, and um, you know, with anything I'm doing digital arts. If you see something in the next piece that you'd like me to go into more detail, please ask. I can, um, <clears throat> you know, try to um, answer that the best I can uh, because I have... I'm going to try to go through maybe four pieces that are all very varied in styles. Um, so I want to make sure that I can uh, answer as many questions as I can. Um, you know, why I'm with you with you all today. I uh, definitely because this is my, also my last stream of the year too, along with along with uh, with Steven. So I'm definitely you know honored to be able to share this stuff today with you guys. Okay, so let's um, move into another piece. Um, <clears throat> this one is um, done with one of the brushes that I'm, I'm giving everyone today uh, towards the end of um, the uh, stream. 
Um, this is done entirely with one brush. Uh, and it's a grub brush that I'm going to be going over. Um, it's right here called the Flux Ever. Um, and uh, everyone's going to be getting this brush today. Um, so uh, definitely enjoy uh, using the brush and, and coming up with ideas <clears throat> yourself with it. Um, so uh, I'm definitely going to go through the process of this one um, and uh, break this all down for everyone today. Um, but again, same kind of layering um, I do um, on, on every piece that you start to see. And, uh, you know, so I definitely want to make sure to go in as much detail with this as possible with you guys. Um, this is actually a huge file. Uh, I believe, what is this? Yeah, this is 28 by 56 at 500 DPI. So it's 28K or 14K by 28K. Uh, so it's, it's definitely, um, higher than anything that could ever probably be printed, <laughs> but I have it uh, primarily for, for large scale or oversized printing. Um, I needed to retain detail. So I, you know, I did this thing at that size. So it's about a 9.44 gig file open, uh, 1.1 1 .1 gig file closed. Uh, thank you. My Mac is not blown up <clears throat> so we can get through this one. So, um, uh, let's uh, go ahead and I'll start from scratch, uh, just to kind of build on this one. <clears throat> do, that. do I do something similar? Um, yeah, uh, for definitely for traditional art, I try to do as many different things that I can to, to create, you know, that spark to I can start to see things. So uh, absolutely, like there's, I don't know if I've got the piece here. I might have it. I, I'll be able to review it with everyone today. I'll check on the external that I've got with me today. Um, I did, uh, there was a piece I did for the Masters of the Universe. Um, I did a Skeletor pinup for a convention. And um, I wanted to try something different for that show. So I went in, I'm going to try, as, we're ta as I'm talking, I'm going to see if I have it. Um, I went in and I grabbed just a piece of eight, eight and a half by 11 paper. I threw dirt and mud and you know, scratched it up um, and I let it just weather overnight. And, um, and the next day I scanned it in and I used it as a texture uh, to create Skeletor, Skeletor's look. Um, and so I, I, you know, I wanted to try something different. So I always, and that's on a digital side, on the traditional side, um, or I, I call it analog art a lot of the time. Um, I, I would go in and, um, you know, try to find ways to push, um, you know, push things even further on that front too. So I, I'm, I'm always trying to experiment um, with whatever medium I'm using just to create new things and come up with new ideas on what else I could do within that medium. Uh, so I definitely, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. It's, it's great to experiment and um, especially with the pastel stuff, because you, you, there's it's so much fun to expand and experiment uh, within that area um, a lot. And pastel and color pencil are you know some of my favorite to work with. Period. So um, you know I, I use acrylic and oils, but most of the time I go straight to pastel or or um, uh, you know kind of color pencil kind of stuff a lot of the time. I use Castle Arts for color pencil and. Um, there's also even some pastel pencils as well, along with like, you know, Prismacolor and other varieties of traditional medium too. So, um, but yeah, so thank you for bringing that up. I, I definitely love to experiment, um, you know, and, and find ways of sparking that inspiration to try something different and, uh, and learn more. That's what, it, you know, to me, it's what it's all about. It's one of the reasons I did this piece. I wanted to test out custom brushes and see what I can do with them. Um, yeah, so I'm glad you do as well. So let's uh, we'll go ahead and bring that brush up and you'll see how versatile this single brush is momentarily. Um, it's very watercolor inspired. Yeah, and so and right. welcome, 1010. I wanted to say hello to 1010 who just jumped in. Hey. How's it going? <laughs> and, and do you use music as your muse? Did you answer that one already? No, I'm sorry. I did not see that, uh, that question. Um, okay. So 
I do. Um, a, lot, <laughs> a lot of the time, I'm a, also a music producer, so um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll um, if you just search on Spotify or Apple Music, uh, my music's uh, under Stations Stories. It's S T A T I O N S S T O R I E S, um, and uh, you know so. Oh, <laughs> see, I see the uh, I see you in there, uh, uh, Dilla. Um, yeah, I, I write a lot of like instrumental soundtrack kind of music, so it's all um, atmospheric kind of stuff. Um, that's what I'm really big into. I mean, I've I've played in bands here in San Diego, a lot of um, uh, like reggae, Latin soul, R and B kind of bands. I've played out here across like a lot of the a lot of the beach clubs, um, PBOB. So, what um, instruments do you play? I play, uh, I started with piano. That was the first when I was um, around 14. Um, but bass, um, I play electric bass and guitar are my primary ones. I started those at 16. Um, uh, I actually almost went to uh, school for music before I ended up going for art at CalArts. So um, yeah, I had an offer at, um, to go to school out in, the, out in the, was it was I think it was Berkeley College of Music. Um, but I ended up taking the the um, grant for CalArts um, to go to them. So, um, you know, but I, I both both I love. So, yes, I do use music a lot um, to get inspiration. Um, I, for, I've got it. With, now, where what is where is your site? Where can we go see your music? Um, so, yeah, if you just search um, Station Stories, I'll put it in this chat. Yeah. And I'll put it on for everybody else. Yep, one second. I'm just trying to switch over to Chrome. And and you can type it into the uh Yeah, the search fields. The the Twitch chat too. So all oh, right. Oops. Well, it's uh, I just sent it to you in our private chat. <laughs> so. Okay, no worries. I'll grab it. I'll put it in. My, my bad. Uh station stories. I'll go look for that. Yep. And yeah, you can just or um, to stationstories.com, and then that way you can see links directly from there. Um, but yeah, uh, that's I've been doing writing music for quite a, quite some time. I mean, I've been seriously playing music since I was about 13, 14, but I've had like uh, keyboards and you name it for <laughs> that's like gosh, since I was probably like seven, six, something like that. that I had been playing like Casio keyboards and Yamaha and had an SK one that had like a um, what you call it uh, like a little music. It was weird. It looked like a like a big old zip drive you would slap on a keyboard. <laughs> but I used that and it had like built in beats I could follow along with and learn. So it was it was a lot of fun um, to do all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I mean that's. I yeah. was um, I I was in the band when I was in grade school. I I, I played the trumpet. Oh, nice. well, actually, the cornet to be exact. I still have it. Oh man! Um, yeah. But 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 music wasn't my passion. Got it. And uh, so I, I mean, other stuff was my passion. So, but yeah, I I, I liked it. <laughs> 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 no, I, mean, I, I I totally get it. I mean, it, you got to find what drives you, you know, and that's that's super important. You know, I mean to. to spend so much time with you know and, and so many years with something you gotta you gotta be you gotta love it you know and and um you know i i didn't want to i i couldn't see myself doing anything but creating so i was going to make sure whatever that was whether it be art or music that you know i gave everything i had for it um you know it was super important uh, for me to, to to do you know what i love um and yeah, of course, there's sacrifices with that. Oh, thanks for sharing that uh, that link, um, Stephen. I saw it right now. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I had to find you know what I gravitated towards, and creating art and music was exactly that. So, you know, I didn't stop at anything. I mean, I literally, I still work probably every every day, pretty much still. Um, were your were your parents supportive? Very, <clears throat> thankfully. I mean, they were they were of course concerned. Um, which I get it, and me trying to jump into art and back in <laughs> I'm not well, back in my day, uh, <laughs> back in your day, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was you know 18, going into college, and and video games were starting to become a thing, 
at that point. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I told my mom and dad I wanted to work in video games. And they were like, ah, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I was like, uh, uh, you know, I had to. Yeah, I, I was just like, I'll, I'll show you guys that there is definitely a career in that. And I ended up lucking out and getting a job working for Midway Games, starting as a game tester. Um, or product analysts is what they're they're called now, or QA, quality assurance. Um, so, so, so you play the game. Yeah, I play games. I got paid for it. So I was just like, I'll definitely do this job. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you know, 18 year old getting to play games and get paid for it. So I was just like, yeah, this is, this is all me. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, I saw that question on the pressure. Um, I'm using, yes, um, I'm using right here, this pressure sensitivity up in this up in this icon on the Cinti. So, you know, I can go really light, um, light pressure sensitivity to get more of that water on, onto the canvas or, you know, dig in and really, you know, it close that out and it really be aggressive with that. Um, so absolutely, it's pressure sensitivity. Um, yeah, yes, the game industry can be very stressful. Uh, I can't agree more with that. Um, this is one of the reasons I don't do, I, I haven't really, I left Sony, uh, was it three, four years ago now? I think four, three years, three years I, I left uh, working for Sony. Uh, it was time for me just to go more, more. Um, I was a contractor for them already, but I wanted to go ahead and just branch out and do a lot more and just, you know, uh, contract to work more freelance on a, a variety of companies. So now I'll do, um, box art covers for studios or, you know, uh, key art or poster design. Um, you know, sometimes I'll di I dive in and do concept art for a studio. Um, oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I see uh, that you work for so many too in IT. So, yes, it's a lot. It, it is it, it is a lot of work uh, for those for those guys. So, um, you know, I, I love working with them, but it was time to just try something different with my career. And, you know, I've been working in gaming since I was 18. So, um, yeah, that was, gosh, it's a while. Uh, so <laughs> let me, uh, I'm going to keep painting. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> as I'm building up all these values, you can go in. One thing you cannot do with watercolor is go right back on top of this with white and, and <laughs> create more value. Uh, so definitely cheating. Um, you know, with, with this, but, you know, it's just to show how versatile this stuff is. I'm going to go ahead and change the background canvas up a little bit. That way I can see more values in this stuff. Did you share with uh, what brush you're using? This, yes. Uh, I, 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 it's the Flux Ever brush that everyone's getting today. Uh, we'll be in, uh, I will be sharing the link towards the end of the stream. Um uh, so that way everyone can have the same brush at the end of end of the today's stream too. And yes, I I I I, I agree. Starting on white paper can be a, an issue, um, and which is immediately why I realized this, it was still a white canvas, so I had to change that. Um, yeah, that way I can see naturally what I'm doing, um, you know, just within value um, on this kind of stuff. So it's important just to be able to have. Yeah. Yeah, that's that. That's a very good point. Yeah, I, you, want I, I, you want something neutral so that you can see your your depth. Yeah, using your values. Exactly. So for me, I, I you know a lot of the time, um, I will uh, value paint um, and go in and, and <clears throat> make adjustments um, just in value before I apply color. Uh, it's really important you know, to have values right. That we've got your foreground, your middle ground, and background elements on the right, you know, the right balance um, before you start, you know, applying color and and building from there. Because I mean, you can have you know amazing color theory and and perfect palette selection, but if your values don't read right, it's going to be almost, you know, you're, you're doing yourself a disservice to not have um, those values right because those colors are truly punched. And that's the problem with photography in general. Yeah. Um, many photographers work backwards because they don't think about going back to values to reapply the color. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree with that. You know, it, it, one thing I'll do when I'm shooting photos and 
is I try to keep that in mind as I'm out there shooting photos. If it's just for textures, mm -hmm. that's different. You know, I don't mind. Uh, I just need to get, you know, the overall look of a texture. But if I'm trying to actually shoot photos that I'm going to go in and, you know, do, I want to help help my process by minimizing the amount of correction that I've got to do in photography. So I try to keep that same kind of, you know, art mindset when I'm going in and, and doing that kind of stuff too. So it's super important, um, you know, to keep, you know, values and all that stuff in mind. And again, I'm just, you know, just painting on this one layer for now. I mean, sometimes I would, you know, I would have liked the tree. I probably would have had another layer, but you know, it's, it's fine. I just want to continue just to, to keep moving. Uh, on this particular piece. And I'll go back on the on the final momentarily so you can kind of, you know, see um, all the different details. I just want to give everyone an example of how I would build um, all of this stuff as I as I paint and get all these elements dropped in. And I'm not really, typically I'll zoom in a lot in and out, but I don't want to get everyone motion sick of me twisting the cameras around and, and zooming <laughs> in and out fast. So I'm trying to keep everything, uh, you know, at one at one focal length. So I'm not going nuts, uh, zooming in all over the place. But um, I think I think people like that. I mean, when I, when I watch presentations, I kind of like them. The, really? the interactivity of things moving around. Okay. I mean, I could definitely do it, but I, I know... Because it shows because it shows how you really should be working as a digital artist. Because it's like when you're working with paper, you you you're spinning it around and you're turning it around and yeah. you're getting and you're bringing your eye close and you're bringing your eye further away. I mean, you're actually doing that in real life. Yeah, no, it's true. I I just I remember I did a live demonstration at a college and uh, I remember doing that. Just you know, naturally just going in, getting in tight. Right. On on you know on, on an area and yeah. I would start to rotate canvas and, and all that kind of stuff um on the, I see that question yes I'm changing brush sizes as I go so yeah. you'll see you'll see that uh you might be able to see actually I'm looking right here and, so you can see it. and when you're zooming in and out like that we can see the details that right you can see you a lot more stay further back right yeah and yeah, no, that's true <laughs> I normally at the end I would zoom in <clears throat> of the piece uh, excuse me and then show, you know, um, uh, all that detail at the end. Right. But, um, you know, I did this, I was, and literally, I, I had, I had a touch um, Wacom tablet, and I was sitting there spinning it, and, you know, <laughs> going all kind of directions, and literally, there was one person in the background, I looked at them, they were putting their head down, I'm like, what's going on? So I, I, I didn't want to call them out. Um, but um, at the end, they were like, oh, yeah, I was, my, my head, I was starting to head was spinning. I was getting a little dizzy. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. that, I that, had that, no that, clue. So. That, that, that's his problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to sacrifice everybody else just because you can't can't keep your your brain straight. Yeah, I mean, I did the whole. I I did the whole class <laughs> with me zooming in and spinning the canvas around. I didn't change my workflow, but <laughs> I always kept it in mind um, when I was uh, doing that. I'm like, man, I'm really getting people motion sick with Photoshop. So I was like, all right, well, let me <laughs> let me uh, figure this out so I can. Yeah, for, 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 for me, for me, it'd be a badge of honor. I say, how many people I can get sick today? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna I'm gonna work like I'm gonna work this close. <laughs> yeah. And I won't be in here doing this the entire time. <laughs> Pixel painting. Pixel uh, painting. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> bullshit, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, you remember back how when I had I had digi paint when I was. 16, 17, I had an Acer 486DX. Oh my gosh. And I, that's all I had, man. I only had DigiPaint. So I thought I was doing big things with my 18 colors, but. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't 16? No, my, my bad. It was 16 colors. So I'm, I'm <laughs> okay. uh, it was only 16 colors back in the day. But yeah, I was, I was, I thought I was doing, doing huge stuff back then. So 
Um, kind of so, like the Microsoft, you know, um, um, Paint program. Yeah, it was. Like, I, Mac Paint. Uh, well, there was, there was Microsoft Paint, and then yeah, I did your Paint. A new moved into Ma uh, Microsoft Paint, and then the literal next software I jumped in was Photoshop. So I was doing. What did I first start with? I think I first started with the eldest. Eldus was the name of the, of the company. Um, paint was it Paint Shop Pro? Yep. Paint Shop Pro. Yeah, I paint Shop Pro because I do remember that. Right, and then I then I went to Painter. Oh yeah. And Painter, as nice as it was at the time, was slow as molasses. <laughs> I know you would do you would do this, <laughs> and then it would talk. It's it's kind of, like, <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Oh, <laughs> There was a cool program. I mean, they. I mean, even to this day, they sped it up quite a bit. But as compared to Photoshop, it's still slow. Yeah, I I, I used to use Painter all the time. I won't lie, I, I loved it. Um, but that that just it 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 it's so hard. Uh, oh yeah, well, Liquify. I saw that. <laughs> well, well, Liquify actually, Yvonne, Liquify isn't slow. It was the smudge that was slow. Liquify is fast. Yeah. Like if you go to filter menu in Photoshop and go to Liquify, yeah. it's fast. It was the it was the smudge tool that was really, really slow. Yeah, Photoshop was smudging. It did the same thing that Painter would do. <laughs> I, and I and I still use smudge to be honest. When I'm doing like fur or hair, I use the smudge. So I've got a, a brush. I might be able to go through that. Um yeah. today. I have it right here. Yeah, actually, actually, can, actually, Tony can show you. Actually, Tony, go to the smudge tool real quick, just uh, just for the fun of it. Yeah. The, um, um, filter, filter. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not smudge tool. The liquify tool. Oh, got okay. it. Okay, filter liquify. Right. Watch how fast it is. It's super fast. So let me. Um, oh, let me slide that over to here so you guys can see it. Oh, that's right. Because you have it on another screen. There. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah, y'all can see me there. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can, uh -huh. zoom, you can zoom into this too. There you go. So if you let's see, do let me uh your pressure. You should be able to see it. I'll zoom tighter right here. It's very yeah, it's fast. It's very quick for for this. I, I remember when it wasn't. Yeah. Um, and and I mean, this was back in like. CS5, maybe? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but and, and also remember. and also your systems graphics cards is being taken up by StreamYard and Twitch. So On that's affecting that. this too. Yep. Yep, that's exactly that. So uh, but it's fine. I mean this Mac is holding on. I mean I'm 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 throwing a dang near 10 gig file at a stream right now. So it's, no, it's what, what are you doing using the Mac? You should have like an alienware. What? Dude, uh, Alienware, man, that is the best. Uh, I'm gonna have to disagree. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, I, 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 they're great, man. I mean, like, I have a, uh, I've got an AMD rig at home. Um, big shout out to those guys. They they've taken care of me for a long time. Um, yeah. Uh, so I I can't. I'm not gonna be slapping Alienware out there that much. But. <laughs> Oh, I'm 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 hooked on Alienware. I mean, their their graphics cards are amazing. Like right now, what the graphics card? You, you can buy a graphics card now. It's gonna cost like two to three thousand dollars. Yeah. And if you just buy this an Alienware, a brand new Alienware top of the line computer for two or three thousand, you get that card in it. Yeah, it's already built built in. It's already, well. already built into it for the same amount of money. So you might as well just get an Alienware. Nah, I, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I no, I'm messing with you. I mean, I mean like, they steal, what is this? They still make Alienware, dude. Wake <laughs> up! <laughs> yes, Alienware, they they they, 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 they they've improved it. Alienware. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. That shit was on the way. <laughs> <laughs> they they've really improved Alienware. They're, they're lighter, yeah, they're, they're, and they're, they're good machines. I, I can't, yeah. I can't, I can't hate on those. Um, I've got a desktop and I have a laptop. I think I think Lee Cozy does also. No, no, they're great. They're great machines, especially when it comes to just getting a good out of, out of the gate built machine. You can just go. You don't have to spend tons of time trying to customize it and making sure stuff works. Um, it's just good. I mean, like that's like, they're great machines. I cannot hate on them. I just 
Yeah, I, I have my rig at home. You know, AMD took care of that one. So I mean, it's 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 like a I can launch rockets with that thing. How powerful that machine is! <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I love my home rig. My here at the studio, I use a uh, N1 Max, uh, 16 inch MacBook Pro um, that's got what 64 gigs of RAM and 100 or four four terabyte internal and. Um, yeah, so it's 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 a powerhouse for a laptop, and it's definitely not that two or three thousand dollar Alienware price, which I would love. Um, but you know, it does exactly what I need, and it's you know that's almost as good as my tower at home. So you know, as long as I can kind of have that same power no matter where I'm at, um, that's one of the reasons I'm with Mac. Plus, I do a lot of music back on now on my Mac again. So I have same literal same software minus Logic because that's only on a Mac. Um, that I can use uh, for music production, but um, you know, I, I wanted to get back to a Mac because I haven't used the Mac in oh gosh, how long have I? Had? I've only had this Mac. Well, I bought this 13 inch pad, mm-hmm. mobile pad. It's a Samsung. Okay. And um, the thing that I like about the Macs is that Procreate I can get on there, um, and there's some of the, some of the Adobe painting products I can get on the Mac that I can't get on the Android. But the Android does have a digital sculpting program, 3D sculpting program that's very good, which is why I went with the Samsungs. I figured eventually Adobe is going to end up porting a lot of their painting tools on over to, um, which, which they have with some, but not all, right. not all, over to Android. But Yeah, not yet. So they will. Um, I, I know it's coming. I mean... It, it's it's inevitable at this point where all that all that stuff software is going to yeah. be on some kind of a tablet. I mean, all that rumored stuff coming out from Apple with having just a giant iPad Pro. Yeah, and, and it's convenient to be able to take. I mean, the, the pad that I bought was a 13 inch. Yeah. So it's nice to be able to take that outside, um, in the park and do a plein air painting. Yeah. Um, and get and get accuracy of these wonderful tools. And I'm loving this Samsung tablet because it's fast. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. And, and, and that's another reason to have one. I mean, that, like you said, that versatility, um, you know, just to, no, go ahead. I can do digital. I can do my digital sculpting. Okay. And then bring that into ZBrush. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Or do my digital painting and bring that back into Photoshop or, or, or painter. Yep. Yep. Exactly. I mean, that versatility just having, but I mean, as this stuff gets more powerful, you, I mean, it's going to get to the point where it's just going to be a, for me. It'll, I'll probably just be on a tablet at all, yeah. time, you know, and and not not have a MacBook with me it'll, you know, well, unless I really need it. But I think the tablets will eventually will be as powerful as a desktop. They will be exactly. They will be. I mean, you know, the, on the Apple side, they you know, the they share the same chips at this point. So you know, I I, I just want it. If they do, if the rumored 16 inch one does come out for an iPad, then yeah, then, then I would just literally use that as um, All right. my primary painting um, tool. So I don't have to have lug around a Cintiq and lug around the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's great when I'm flying, especially on yeah. the airplane. Yeah. And, I, and, I always, and I always bring my, um, my, my Wacom Mobile Studio Pro on yep. the plane, yep. which is great because it's a full computer. Right. Um, no, but you've got your paint. And I have all, all of my painting tools on it. But the disadvantage is, is that it runs out of power, out of battery power, way before I get to my destination. <laughs> yeah, you get about you get about a, a hot forty five minutes, and that thing is yeah. dead. <laughs> but 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 a lot of the flights have gotten pretty good now, where they're actually giving you um, AC plugs right there, yeah. in front of you, and, and even in the coach section, coach yep. and, and a, a first class. So that's kind of that's kind of nice. So so uh, now if that's the case, then that would alleviate the need for a pad. But still, it's nice to be sitting and waiting in the airport. You could bring out this really lightweight pad, and and you can just start drawing and painting with it. You know exactly. Yeah, which is which is so awesome to be able to have. I mean, I would have loved that. You know, as a kid or a sixteen year old, when I was started getting serious with art, to have a you know a powerful tablet where I can just go nuts and and and. Yeah, anywhere. Um, you know, it, I, I had. <clears throat> I mean, at that age, I only had Prisma colors and some Strathmore paper. So, <laughs> yes, 
that's it. So I would have loved to have an iPad at that age and then and learn so much. You know, I, I'm, like my, my like my bond on here and many others who, and even with Lee, you know, they're they're using a traditional means of painting. Yeah. And I'm thinking, gosh, all the money I can save on paints and and <laughs> and it's like, it's like with 3D, right? When I yeah. was a kid, I was building models all the time. I mean, that was that was <clears throat> if I if I got on restriction and everybody else went to grandma's house, but I had to stay home because I was bad, I was happy. Because I went down in the basement and played with my models, <laughs> right? and I, I, had, I had my 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 testers paints and my testers glue, and now here we are with three D, right? Yeah, yeah, I can do whatever I want. No glue, no paints. I can make it fly. Make laser blasters. Make a little cinematic movie or something or a short film. I mean, it's like oh my gosh. I mean the the tools we have. And then you've got this blender that's come out, yep. and oh my God, they're killing it! They're <laughs> killing it in 3D. They're killing it in digital painting. They are. Killing it. I mean, they're just—it's amazing. Yeah, it's taken over and it's free. So <laughs> it's, 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 it's taken over and it's free. So, so I, I've had the opportunity. Actually, I, I shared it with you, but I haven't shared it with all of my guests yet. But I teach a, a, a blender workshop. But I was also just asked to teach at a um, at a, um, a well-known studio um, up in Los Angeles called Studio Arts. It's, 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 a, it's a school that take seasoned professionals in the industry and retrain them in some other art form. Like uh, like if you're a Maya guy, you want to be trained in Photoshop, or a Photoshop guy, you want to be trained in Maya. So I, I've had the opportunity of of teaching all of their 3D Blender classes. So I'm looking forward to that. But but it's just the industry is just it's just moving ahead by leaps and bounds and making it so much more accessible. Yep. Which is which is awesome. You know, I, yeah. I, I always say it. I mean, it's <clears throat> seeing what teenagers can do <clears throat> with their skill sets now is just unreal. Um, seeing oh, how yeah. Good, you know, some of these you know, young young artists are coming up in, in the industry and you know it's so inspiring to see how how fast they're learning and how gifted they are with this with this stuff and and, and not only that but but they they have they create some pretty interesting results because they kind of don't care yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, <I> got this. <laughs> so I'll, I'll definitely i'm i just blocked this in yeah, you know, I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit because that's gonna be my middle ground. So I don't want the uh, for value to to be as dark as the foreground. So I'm gonna lighten that up a little bit. Okay, and then I'll add another layer. <laughs> I just saw that comment from White. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I'll go ahead and bring in just the foreground element again. That's gonna be more. Just uh, you know, real you know, natural K tone or black. Um, race out some of this stuff, <clears throat> and then I'll uh, go ahead and do this. I'm gonna add a quick radio gradient to kind of separate out that silhouette a little bit more. We'll we'll go about another fifteen minutes, Tony, and then we'll right. take a fifteen minute break. Sure, sure, sure. And that'll be our halfway point. No problem. It goes by fast. It's moving. I, I didn't realize what time it was. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping uh, everyone's digging, um, you know, the the, uh, the session today. But oh yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely. I want to get that in here. Um, I'll go back to this one. And in fact, I'll group these. So you can get an idea. I'll zoom in on my actual, well, yeah, I gotta be on the actual right layer. Um, <laughs> I can zoom in on here, that way you can see a lot more of the detail, but it's, 
the same brush uh, the whole way through it. Um, so you can start to see you know, even like almost like this fiberish kind of stuff is all that same brush. That's nice. Um, you know, so it's it's extremely versatile. But um, you know, I, I, when I first uh, sent this out, um, you know, the the the, uh, the some of the people who were looking at it wanted to know the which brushes, you know, in in plural was I using. I'm like, oh, that's just ones. <laughs> Um, yeah, everyone's all freaking out because it's all, all all that was in it with a single brush. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. I mean, typically, you know, there's in concept, especially concept art when developing games or animation or whatever it may be. Um, you know, we'll use a variety of brushes. So there'll be brushes for leaves. There'll be brushes for rocks, grass. Yeah, you, know, you name it. There's brushes for all of it. Um, but you know, for me, I wanted to give myself just a challenge to see if I can do everything in one, um, and still make it look like it's done with multiple brushes. So, um, yeah, well, and you can, I mean, I, I think some of my more, more successful paintings, digital paintings is when I've done it with one brush. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree. I mean, I like, I like to stick to one when I can, I, I just, I, I mean, for me, for speed, I, I can just go. Um, a lot quicker when I just have um, one. So I'm not having to constantly go to my brush palette and select brushes and adjust sizes and <clears throat> all that good stuff. So I try to keep it super simple, um, which is why I only have these as my favorites. I'll, these are the only ones I use on all of my pieces primarily. I do have tons of other brushes here, um, you know, textured oil brushes, my other brushes, some general ones, special effects brushes, concept art brushes. I do have a lot. Um, but these are the go-to, um, and some of them are stock, like the chalk is a stock brush, um, the stock, uh, <clears throat> yeah, the hard, you know, st standard round, hard, soft airbrush, you know, all that stuff. So, so that's the one brush to rule them all. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just try to find shortcuts wherever I can. One thing when I first started uh, doing digital art and my art director um, working at Wildstorm, um, which uh, was at Image Comics, I did not know Photoshop. Uh, I literally got the job off of a colored pencil portfolio um, and I'd shown it at Comic-Con uh, when I was uh, 18. And um, j just before I turned 19, I was already at the studio. So I didn't know anything about Photoshop. So they were like, um, experiment and have fun, you know, and, and it, <laughs> it was just the basically it was just like there's four ways to do everything in Photoshop. So it must um, have scared the daylights out of you. It did. It did. <laughs> like, why would you tell me that, man? I just started. Just tell me one way. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but, but what's interesting is that that's the real world. It's like you don't go in a job. You go on a job with some skill sets, and they hire you I hire you based on some skill sets, but they expect you to expand your knowledge and learn it on your yep. own. Yep, and, and literally that's what I did. So, you know, I was there, graveyard shift is starting, you know, it was like, I made like 5 an hour, and I, I was like, I'm doing this, this is what I want to do. And I would stay in my graveyard shift, and I would stay an additional eight-hour shift to practice Photoshop. Yeah. Um, and I didn't know anything else, but that, that was my, my entire day. So 16 hours gone, just, yeah. just I was inundated in Photoshop yeah. all day, all night, did not care. You know, I took a nap, went right back to it, <laughs> just kept going uh, it, I, that for like five months, something like that. Right. Uh, and, and I just, mm -hmm. you know, immersed myself in Photoshop. Um, and yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I had to learn it somehow. I started off as a, as, as a photographer, well, traditional photographer before digital. That, of course, that transitioned to digital. But then that transitioned to digital in terms of Photoshop and, and compositing and painting. And, um, and of course, that, that transitioned over to 3D. Mm -hmm. but, um, but you're spending, I mean, when I was doing photography, I was showing my photo photographic work in, internationally in galleries and wow. museums. And... Um, but when I went to when I went to learn Photoshop back in version two and a half or th version three, That's three, I stopped doing photography for two years. Whoa! For two years because I was so 
I had to just learn Photoshop yep. because the, 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 the creative flexibility that I had with photography, I wanted to be the same with digital. Yeah. And in order for me to do that, I needed to, I needed to discipline myself, not do photography, just do Photoshop. And then after about two years of just doing the, 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 uh, the digital and I, and I, I started to get a real good hand on digital and started mm -hmm. producing some creative stuff that I can actually put on the walls and show in galleries. Then I went back to photography again. And, and that was, and, and at that time, that was where I hadn't been back to Death Valley in years because I had been so involved with, with digital on um, Photoshop. Yeah. Um, and this is back where there were what 80 some x86 machines where the RAM that was in them was no more than you can you can afford more than four gigs. Yeah, that, I mean, and that was screaming at that point too. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was slow. So we have to find tricks, little tricks yep. to speed things up. <laughs> yeah, no, it was seriously that, and I and I, I couldn't I couldn't you know, I had to find shortcuts like because I would constantly run out of RAM. Um, you know, so I would like copy out layers, paste them on the separate files. Right. Um, and then I composite those and then bring them in as one layer. Um, That's right. Then, you, had to, you had to merge your layers together. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. Yep. I couldn't get away with a thousand layers back then. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I learned how to do it now, though. So. Oh gosh. But now with the faster processors. Yeah. Uh, if they okay, so why I mentioned they, they finished a terabyte scan of the earth from space. Nice. Oh yeah, that's a big scan. Holy cow. That I, mean, I would love to see that. It yeah, the detail. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll see all the other comments in there too. Uh, that yeah, yeah definitely. We're 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 on our way to becoming a space bearing species. So yep. Okay, so additional uh, IB Wizard says the industrial light magic and on Disney plus in one episode they talk about the connection between George Lucas and the creation uh of Photoshop. Uh, oh. it, was, it was Thomas Knoll. Was yep. it Thomas Knoll? That was his that was Lucas's right hand guy. I thought it was Knoll, but it was it, yeah, I thought it was. I think it's you know, I met him at SIGGRAPH. He sat wow. right next to me in, in the electronic theater, literally right next to me. That is and so I cool. looked and I looked over and saw his badge and I said, Are you the Thomas Noel? And it was. Wow. I was so shy about it. I didn't <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was like my, my family owned a restaurant. Okay. And um um for for 18 years, and um one of the regular customers was Gene Rottenberry. Oh man, and he and I've got his signature on the menu somewhere. I've got to find it. I don't know where it is, but I got to find it. Yeah, and I got to agree with uh, Vaughn as saying you 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 shy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I and my mom told me to gave me gave me a pen and says go get his autograph, and I wouldn't because I was so shy. Okay, I would, I would not go get it. <laughs> so she had to go get it for me. Uh, I mean that is that, that is Roddenberry. I get it, man. And Knowles. So. <laughs> yeah, and but his ex-wife was a regular customer too. I thought that was interesting. Oh wow. And his brother worked at Lucas and went home and told him what they were doing. Uh then Thomas crafted the first Photoshop. I got it. Yeah. Wow. So find it, frame it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no question. Yeah, I gotta find it it's somewhere in the boxes. I, this horrendous move I made for my old house—it's somewhere in here. I don't. I'm, I'm hoping it's still here. Yeah, let's hope so, man. That, that's when you want to keep right there. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching a um, thinking about Star Trek. I was watching a, 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 a documentary on on Star Trek and. Gene Rottenberry and the effects and all that stuff. It was yeah. interesting. Nice. Legendary had, stuff, man. <laughs> yeah, they had to phase him out because he was so on the traditional way of doing things and everybody yeah. else wanted to move on and do something different. 
That's, I mean, I, I get it. Everything changed with technology, but yeah, you have it to does. adjust. It sure does. Let me, um, before we go into break, I'll bring up the brush code for everyone to go grab this stuff. Um, All right. Yeah, we'll get here. I'll go ahead and uh, bring up our timer up here. I mean, I'll still be here and doodling and warming up for the next uh, the next half or you know the second half of this. So, um, you know, why? Yeah, you know, I'll definitely stick around for questions or anything if if you'd like. Um, it's it's solely up to you. Yeah, well, we should get. I, I I try to encourage everybody just to take the fifteen minute break, get snacks, okay. and okay. walk around and. Um, it's always good to, to get away from the computer. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I'm bad about it always, but it is good to stand up and not look at Aren't, the screen. We all. <laughs> I, have to, I have to get up from the computer and go to the gym and go swimming or go walk. <laughs> you know, yeah, for real. Oh, my gosh. You've got to take care of your health. I, I know too many artists who are dead. Yeah, because they didn't do it. Diabetes yeah. and a heart disease because they sit on their ass yeah, all day. No, all I've, been, day. I've been running lately, so I run run about ten to fifteen miles a week now. So, yeah, I've been doing mountain biking and swimming. Oh, that's good, man. Especially the swimming. I I, oh, I yeah. haven't done that in a long time. Yeah, that's really good. So, all right, everybody, we're gonna we're gonna um take a break. I'm gonna um stop. Uh, let me. You can keep sharing your screen. Don't need, you, don't, you don't need to take your screen off. Oh, no, 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 I'm leaving the screen. That way everyone, okay, if you good. want to screen grab, um, you know, that link is just grubbrushes.com forward slash Washington. Uh, all that'll right. give you all the brushes. So, yeah, at, when we come back in 15, then that's definitely a pick up. All right, cool. The timer's on. We'll be back in 15 minutes. Tony, you're wonderful. So okay. if anybody has any questions or anything, go ahead and think about them. Put them in the chat box. We'll bring them on up. And then I'm going to give you the link also to the Twitch channel. So please um, send this out to all of your friends and followers. Let them know that Tony is here doing a live, a free live presentation and to come join us on. So if they'll log on. They'll see the, the timer here and they'll know we're coming back. So um, take a little break. We'll come back and we're, we'll finish up the last hour and a half. Um, and I think what we'll do also is we, we, we will do a Creative Cloud one-year subscription giveaway to some lucky winner. Okay? All right. We'll be back in about 15. All right. See you guys. All right. Tony. 
Comic Illustrator.
We have about one minute left to go. Yep, I'm here. Oh. I was just snacking. <laughs> <laughs> so what what are you what are you snacking on? Um, some trail mix. So <laughs> trail mix is it is it raw trail mix? Uh, I, I hope it is. No. <laughs> uh, I know it's not raw now. <laughs> it's like uh, from Costco, so it's got to be real and, and, and raw. Oh, no. <laughs> Costco has some good stuff. I like Costco. They, they've they got good quality stuff for very low prices. Yep. Yeah, so I'm, I'm doing that. So I'm not having tons of sugar right now. <laughs> 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 All right, I guess it's about that time. Let's go All ahead right. and uh, stop this real quick. And um, okay, so we are back and live. Let me go ahead and and share your screen once again. Sure. Uh, oops, I lost my Twitch uh, link here. Where are you? Not Twitch, but there we go. That's what I want. All right, let's bring back your. Okay, good. I think we're seeing your screen now. Okay, good. Now we're back from break. All right, let me um, close out some of this stuff. Uh, Someone mentioned that they were trying to make it out to the 1835 studio in November, but was stuck working. And they love that shop. Uh, hold on one second. No worries. Okay, Anthony had to step away for a second. Um, let's see. There's another <coughs> little comment here. Had to step away. Missed the ending. Thanks for the lesson. Happy holidays. Okay, so that was Mark. Mark, we are not. We're not over yet. Um, I will call you, Stephen. Okay, yeah. No worries, Mark. Looking forward to hearing from you. Okay. So, Wyvonne okay. says she's back. Okay, I think they're all coming back now. Nice. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, sorry. That didn't, to, to, I didn't answer the question about um, to, to Dilla. No worries. I'm here all the time. You feel reach out anytime. I'm normally here typically Monday through Friday, so I'm here anytime after uh, 10 o'clock, and I'm here until about 6, 7 o'clock at night. So if you're in the area, anyone uh, is welcome to come out here. Um, I'm located on the second floor, but uh, yeah, definitely just you know give me a heads up and I'll you know come down, meet you downstairs, grab some coffee or some tacos or whatever you like. So. They've got tacos there. Yep. Yeah, on Tuesdays and um, Tuesday, Wednesday, they have a food truck here. Um, All and, right. And uh, coffee's here. Um, Tuesday through Saturday, amazing coffee. So, um, okay. Oh, really? Okay. Yep. All right. So, Yvonne has a question. Uh, do you start with a pre planned idea or just start drawing and then see things materialize on paper? All right. Well, uh, I, I'm glad you said that. Um, the uh, next piece will be uh, that, that exactly how I, how I lay stuff out. Um, this is a, uh, a cover I did for a book called uh, Drac. Um, uh, basically, it's a uh, it's a really really oh I mean it's dark but <laughs> but it's cool though I really I really I'm really into it. Um, and uh, you know I definitely when I'm working working with the with the with the crew on this one, uh, they gave me a good idea of the the style and the mood that they were into for the look of the of the project. And then I needed to go in, um, and this is the first cover for their, you know, inaugural, you know, inaugural um, streaming. Well, it's more of a web-based comic, so I don't think they have anything print yet, but it's all web-based. Um, so on on uh, the Tapas app, so they had me design the opening cover for issue one. Um, oh, I'll see that question about Chef Buddha. I do not know. I, I if I if I can find out and definitely let you know for sure. Well, who is who is Chef Buddha? Um, that's what I was trying to figure out myself. I, I don't know. I don't. I do know that the current one that's here is um, Marco. Uh, he does uh, his tacos are called his company's called Wet Tacos. They're like you know, media based tacos. Really, really, 
I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm, I had, I stopped eating beef a while ago, but I had, he's got vegan uh, tacos that, uh, that are unreal. So I, I, you're vegan. No, no, I, I eat chicken and fish, but he oh, had okay. vegan tacos, but I'm not, I'm not vegan. I, 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 I could not do that. <laughs> you, don't, you don't take ribs away from a black man. <laughs> I, mean, I still got chicken, so <laughs> <laughs> the stereotype was too much. But <laughs> um, oh gosh! Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, but this particular project, um, I am. Um, you know, I really wanted to grasp what they were going for for their concept, and so I, I did a series of sketches um, that, that that conveyed, you know, one to no location, the type of setting they saw the same. Was this a day or night? What's the character look like? So I got references. Well, you know, where you know, where does this character reside? So they were telling me Venice. Um, so I, you know, grabbed a lot of you know, you know online photos as Google Venice and the boardwalk and. And um, and then and did some uh, Google SketchUp models to to block in just the basic terrain, um, and then I found an angle that I wanted to use, so I would just quickly screen grab and import that into my sketches that you can see here. Um, so there's there is definitely some blocking of just some buildings that I've dropped in just to kind of get an idea of the setting for these covers. Sent these all off. Um, and got approval, and they ended up going with this uh, number two um, as their final cover. So to answer the question of how I, you know, I plan my ideas, client work, I sketch everything out. Um, I, I, just so I can get, you know, a, a lot better connection with what's in their head. Um, but that way it's easier for me to go in and do my thing. That way it's, I, I, you know, it's a lot easier once I get approval on a sketch. I can go straight into paint. Or, or drawing. Um, the final piece was this one. Uh, and um, you know, so it was, it was a lot of fun to go in and uh, just create this stuff. I mean, they didn't have any, they had like some initial art done, um, you know, character sketches and all that kind of stuff, but they didn't have any heavy, uh, like, you know, very painted um, or digitally painted kind of assets. Um, and it, number two is more in your face. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, so I went in and just drew this entire thing. I did my layout, uh, rough layout in actually Clip Studio Paint. So, I mean, I, I, I work in very software, but all of my painting is done primarily. There's only a couple of pieces that I've done outside of Photoshop, but just, just for experimentation that I'd use clip uh, their oil brushes and were, which are actually really nice um, but I um, I wanted to go ahead and do everything in Photoshop so on you know pretty much everything I do is Photoshop um, so especially on, the, on color and texture and matte painting and all that kind of stuff is all done um, in Photoshop so the final piece is that one um, I'll go in and um, just start dropping out layers so you guys can get an idea of what this stuff will look like before color correction. Um, you know, you can see all the stuff in the background. Uh, this is a matte painting of various buildings and Google SketchUp models that I brought in. Um, so, uh, you know, so like this, this stuff was a model that I painted right on top of. Uh, this was, this section was, I brought in a photo and then mixed it with a 3D model and another 3D model back here. Um, so, you know, I, I, you know, I definitely go in and, and use various techniques to get um, a lot of these looks down. Um, yeah, so special effects for the light. Uh, and you can see, I, <laughs> I mentioned it earlier, but you can see it in, 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 in this file. I don't label all of my stuff. So <laughs> I typically just go straight and paint, um, and because yeah, I try to, I try to get as as close to you know a day and a half to two days on certain projects. Sometimes it just take longer, um, which you know can happen with 
uh, especially client-based work where there's going to be revisions or um, just changes um, in general. Uh, the background is five separate photos that I've brought together. Um, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of that experimentation today. I'm going to show you that in one more piece uh, before we wrap today. Um, just so uh, it's just you guys can get an idea of how to how I would bring in um, photography. And I might do it in some of this piece too. Um, but I definitely wanted to show uh, at least all of the different layers that are in here. Um, that we can get an idea of how I, how I build all of this stuff. And again, just going through layer after layer. And that's pretty much it. So um, I'll bring these all back in and start going through some what some of the layers are and some of the modes I use them in and why uh, as well. And again, uh, definitely um, oh, oh, yes, and I and to uh, Levon, uh, yes, do not go to hostels. I agree. <laughs> I saw that comment, so uh, no, nah, I've been I've been some overseas before, and yeah, thankfully I did not get chopped up. So uh, yeah, I I I, uh, I can't say that for every one of them though. So uh, yeah, definitely not do that. Um, so. I'll go through some of these layers to kind of get an idea of why, you know, what layer modes I would use, um, why I did them uh, that way. Um, and so you can kind of get an idea of, um, so this is a, let me see. This was a photo, and I have a layer mask on it, so you can kind of get an idea. I'll disable it. Um, and I used this a portion of that photo um, to, to get that sky in the area that I liked. Um, you know, I masked it all out, and uh, it's currently at normal, but I'll move it down to screen. And uh, I'll drop the opacity back. Um, that way, just, just enough where I can get um, a good silhouette of the of the buildings that are in the background. Um, so I get a little extra punch just by having just the photo to kind of help bring that detail. Um, and, oh, your question as far as, do I get asked the question what your paintings mean a lot? Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 and, and that's, and, you know, absolutely, because, I mean, it, it can mean uh, so much to, um, you know, to so many different other creative, uh, you know, individuals out there. So for me, I mean, um, you know, for what, what my paintings mean, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it, 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 it just depends on the piece. Uh, for the most part, for me, I try to, uh, you know, I try to figure out, you know, whatever I, I try to find a way to, you know, express what I'm thinking or feeling at that time. Um, you know, and I try to be open and versatile to what I'm trying to learn and paint and design. Um, I don't like to, I don't like to stick in one area. Uh, that's one thing I've, you know, learned over the nearly 30 years of doing it, just trying to experiment and learn as many techniques as I can, especially in this space of digital art, because there's so much to learn. Um, I, I mean, I, I had, I, I was heavily into 3D until I, I, you know, got myself, you know, just more immersed in digital art. And painting and doing concepts so you know I, I emerged but i've done a 3d a lot into my my digital art so you know whether it's using sketchup or um, even some light blender stuff steven is definitely the one to go to for, for blender um you know for but for me i tried to you know after i find whatever software will help me achieve a certain look i try to just try to learn as much as i can about that software so i mean the painting you know whatever for me you know these paintings I mean, you know, a lot, I mean, it, 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 it could be, again, client-based work where I have to convey a, a feeling or a mood. Um, so I have to go in and figure out how to do that for them, uh, you know, and, and um, whether, 
you know, regardless of what's happening now with AI art and, and, and all that kind of stuff, I have to be able to find, um, you know, uh, a way of, of conveying a certain mood. And especially when it comes to gaming and movies, we have to um, be precise about what we're going for because we that's what, you know, a lot of the people are going to be using, whether it's an animation or live action, they're using what I do as a concept artist. Um, so that's that's going to be what they use as the look of the film. So I have to be able to convey that in 2D or whatever means I'm using in painting, um, and give that to the to you know the creative crew to go and do their thing to make these movies happen. So you know I'm I'm right at that beginning stage um, of that stuff. So um, perfect example. I was you know there was only one person working on. I worked on a Ninja Turtle movie um, back in like 2000 and five four something like that uh and it was a cg animated movie but there was only one artist on to start that movie and uh and it uh all that pressure was on me to, to to do all that stuff in the beginning um and uh you know so i had the i i led the you know the style with the directors and, and producers sat down with them developed a look and then 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 they you know used that as the style for the film and then they went in and hired you know, of, of some amazingly talented artists, uh, and up and across you know, in the U S we had maybe 15 to 20 of us. And then a whole staff of 400 animators, um, you know, based off of my initial concept. So it started with me, but it branched out to hundreds of people, um, based off of the initial art that I had done. So, you know, it's very important to be able to be precise, uh, with a look and a style, especially in pr major production kind of work. Uh, but personal work, it's just, it's just, Sometimes I'm just cruise control, just want to relax and get something down on paper, keep creativity rolling. Um, and but there's some some thoughtful, you know, more provoking kind of things that I'll do um, with art that maybe I, you know, I'll post online just to, you know for feedback or or just for personal use. Uh, just to you know, I, I find creating a lot is very therapeutic for me. So I constantly will you know be drawing or sketching or you know, if it's if it's on paper or on my iPad or, or always you know producing something daily. Um, you know, I, I, it's rare that I take off, you know, an entire day, um, which is, I don't, which is not bad, but I do need to step away, you know, for some time, you know, and I'm going to try to do that for once this year. So, uh, I got a few days left to try that out, but it's how well that works. It must be, it must be gratifying and an honor to see a whole team of artists trying to produce your, your vision. And when you and uh, it was, it was, it was an undertaking to, 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 I mean, to, to get the style right. Um, because I didn't know, you know, what everyone was going for initially. So I spent, you know, a month under a month developing an entire look for that movie with the directors and the producers and, um, you know, getting the blessing from Kevin Eastman and Peter Lair from the Ninja Turtles that, that they liked the stuff that I did. So, um, it's a tremendous honor, uh, to, 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 to spearhead, you know, what that movie looked like. Um, yeah, you know, so it was, yeah, but yeah, I was, I was excited and terrified at the exact same time. <laughs> so, um, but you, you, know, were. But, you know, I, it, it, it turned out great and I'm so happy it did well. And, um, you know, it was, it was, it was wild to see it, that start from me, from me to, to, to branch to, hundreds of incredibly talented people um who nailed it um you know and, and I, I i was you know yes i started the whole thing off but yeah, i can't take credit for that movie that that was a team of just you know, amazingly next level artists that made that stuff happen so um you know i i i, I credit to them <laughs> um so yeah so on on this stuff so for uh, like I'll break down some of this art in here. Uh, I know we have about an hour, so I, I know I can't go through every single aspect of it, but I will, um, cause I am going to do a little bit of light painting to wrap the session today, but we'll go through the, um, main character here, Drac himself and, um, and break him down. Let me see. So you can see there's a lot of layers happening in here, uh, which is him. I will, um, let me see, I'm gonna do this. Go ahead and just 
turn these other people off in the background. And I'll go ahead and group all of this. And so we can get an idea of what he would look like um, before all that color correction and all that kind of stuff that happened. Um, you can see that, and then uh, I will go into his layers. And so you can definitely see, I was you know, piecing things together to get certain looks down. They wanted to have some gold chains. I was like, okay, if I can do it, I can put some gold chains up in there. Um, you know, but it's all, all to get you know this stuff down. Um, how much you know I would need to do to get this look to work for for the team. Um, so you can see some of the line art that was underneath. Uh, I drew it really quickly in Clip Studio. Use that as my outline, and then I just painted right on top of it. Um, and it, just to make it a lot easier for myself, because uh, just to have that in general approval on line art, um, that way I can not have to do as much. Um, I can disable this so you can see all the line art. But um, so I, I used that as my basis. They approved that. And then I went in and um, went on ahead and painted everything else around that. I'll go ahead and enable that again. Uh, to get this look down. So it was really, uh, really fun just to break down their character. And um, I used, again, on this stuff, one brush uh, for the entire piece. Um, on at least all the, all the coloring uh, was just one. I used uh, the chalk one. Um, and then, um, in fact, you know what? I take that back. It's two brushes. This is um, Flux Ever, uh, that same brush I used for that a painting in the previous um, previous piece that was the hair and then the, everything else the skin cloth um, was uh, just a chalk brush um, stocked with Photoshop so you don't need to have any extra um, you know brushes or anything crazy like that it's just that one um, so I will um, do a quick rundown with this piece again um, since we have all spent a little bit of time recoloring him uh, and let's see. Okay. Let me increase this canvas a little bit. off some gaps really quick. And as I'm going with this stuff, uh, if you all have any um, any questions whatsoever, please um, you know, let me know. I want to make sure uh, as I go through the stuff that I can answer, um, you know, again, any questions that you may have. put in a flat color um, for, for this and then I would typically turn off uh, like this 
lasso anti-aliasing tool, turn off the aliasing on the wand, because I'm using that a lot. Turned off the aliasing on the paint bucket, which is off. Um, as if you, in comic, in comic book work, when I'm laying in flat color, um, I, I make sure those are turned off because if I have to go back and select it again down the road, I will have an issue where colors are bleeding because that there, it's a really, it'll be a soft line versus a chiseled outline where this can be an issue um, with within that kind of stuff to where if, in fact, I'll show you what it looks like. If I, if, if a print, if it goes to print and a plate shifts, which do happen uh, in comics, you'll see that under color. And you'll see this weird fuzziness underneath the liner that would show the uh, it'll show like multiple colors from everything that had bunched up next to each other. And so one of the biggest things that you need to do before you're laying in flat colors or just flats in general um, is to make sure all of those options are turned off um, because it will it will show up. Um, and I'll 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 put them all on so you can see it as an example. I'll turn them all back on. And then I will select this out. I'll just change this. And um, I will have this, change this into a color too. I'm just making up some basic colors right now, nothing to I'm not really thinking about too much about what the actual colors are. I just want to make sure I give you an example. Uh, and you'll see that um, once I turn off this line art layer, you'll make out some fuzziness happening within. Um, you'll see this kind of stuff happen where these these should not be, this should not be this weird gray grayish line meeting up they should be seamless um it should look like this where both colors are butted up side by side where it's really chiseled and and uh hard edged out it should be you know very seamless not fuzzy like this kind of stuff in here we get this weird you know because if i go in I'm like oh you know i don't like that color i'm going to change it to this now all of a sudden you you have a, another color um, you know, that might not work when like, well, I'm going to change that, but oops, um, let me go back to swatches. Um, I can go change the color again. And now you've got all these extra fuzzy colors all of a sudden. So it's, it's, it's super important to make sure that that stuff is turned off. Um, just so you can avoid having to have to go back and clean up a flat color and save time and avoid any crazy mistakes that can happen in printing. Um, Cause they have happened where I've, I've literally seen a comic that I worked on uh, where, it, where it shifted about, I don't know, maybe two sixteenths where the line art was moved off, off the frame. And so none of the stuff was centered properly. So, and, and sure enough, um, the color that was underneath from the team had this exact same stuff to it. So it just looked like, Oh, but yeah, it looked, it looked bad. So <laughs> I'll just say that. And um, so it's really important just to have that kind of stuff, you know, fixed in the beginning before it goes to the final. I just avoid all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'll continue to uh, knock this out. And I'm just going to quickly just block in some of this stuff and uh, one thing I always say is um, learn as many hotkeys or make as many custom hotkeys for yourself for your workflow as possible. Um, it saves so much time. I mean, I even have hotkeys on, on the stylus uh, to help me with stitching and all that kind of stuff in Photoshop. Um, you know, so I try to recommend at all times to um, you know, have, uh, if you can, you know, do 
um, you know, learn hotkeys and get used to hotkeys. Uh, it's really, really important um, to have them for speed because you can definitely move through pieces so much quicker when you start having that kind of stuff in your <laughs> in your um, your tool set as you're as you're moving through you know through your pieces, whether it's comics or concepts or uh, just paintings in general. It's just great to have uh, general knowledge of what the hotkeys are in Photoshop or any software uh, for that matter. Just for for speed's sake, especially when using like crazy menu based things like uh, Blender, where it's like what, 100 million options you can choose from uh, to get you know the, the, to certain things. I mean, it's it's important to have um, you know those hotkeys down just to help you know get you through pieces. I'll leave all the rest of that um, for now so we can get to painting. Um, and so uh, typically I make a brand new layer. Uh, it's underneath the line art for here. Um, and I'll have it, you know, I haven't labeled it, but it's layer three right here I just made. Um, I will, you know, I try to figure out light sources um, early on, especially if like if I can put light sourcing in on like a um, layout, uh, I would, I would do it there, so um, I kind of, I kind of dropped in, you know, what I felt would be, you know, a good way of lighting it. Um, you know, and I, I just dropped it in very quickly in Photoshop as a sketch, and I brought that in, and then, you know, uh, can use that as my my point of reference to go in and paint right on top of. So um, I'm gonna use again stock brush. It's just chalk. Um, it says 23 pixels, but you can change. You can change it to whatever size you want as you paint. Yeah. So there is. Uh, it's it's your preference as you're moving through your pieces. Um, but yeah, you know, I just have it. It's just I just had made the brush at that size and just saved it out. Go ahead and just throw since I'm selecting on. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll wait for that at the end. Um, you know, so keep in mind that the, the lighting is pretty much coming top down on him. So just kind of remember how the light's going to affect shadows and all that good stuff as you're painting. So um, it's really important to have a reminder of that kind of stuff. Sometimes I'll put indicator of, you know, what I'm doing with the lights, especially if I'm doing like, you know, multiple lights in a scene. Um, I'll put in arrows to remind myself of which colors are supposed to go, uh, you know, for a composition. Um, you know, I'll do like a movie poster where it's a lot of varying light sources, but yeah, you know, so I'll keep, <clears throat> I'll keep certain things in mind. Um, so I don't mess stuff up as I think. And, uh, but yeah, but as, as this is top down, this is super simple to keep it to where I'm able to um, remember where I'm placing my light torches at. There is definitely some ambient light. So like you saw in the final, um, the final piece where, you know, you can see where some of this light was, it, 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 it fades off you know, for the most part. But there is a little bit of ambient light that's hitting with inside the bicep, and you know, and, and even within that shadow, there's a little bit of light, um, just to help define shapes a little bit more. And so, I'll probably will just, um, I'll typically will add an overlay, just to kind of help set the tone more. Um, And then I can just paint underneath it. Um, and if you're sampling color and you were trying to make sure you avoid any colors that are above it, you can always just change your options. 
Uh, you can change your options. Um, and here, so if you're in your eyedropper and you can go to current and below, uh, you can change that here. That's what I'm using. You can have all layers if you want to select through every layer, but I currently use uh, current and below and go through here and just set everything up that way. That way I'm never selecting a, a, a color that's above the layer I'm on. Um, so that's just one one quick thing I do um, as I'm painting, because again, I, I try to go quick on, on this stuff, because especially I'm on a deadline, I need to move. I had uh, only a few days to get this thing done um, from start to finish, and you know, it's a lot of a lot of work. Um, so I was like, okay, I need to, I need to move. So let me figure this out. So I quickly um, went through and you know just laid in uh, you know the basic stuff that I I'm comfortable with, and then you know just start experimenting. Well, especially as a brand new you know um, project, so brand new. Uh, IP, so I need to make sure that I, I try to do something different with it, um, you know, and, and, and make it its own uh, its own book and style and color palette and all that kind of stuff. I, you know, it's really important to keep trying things as I go. So, um, you know, I always want to experiment, especially, you know, with a brand new project that has not had a set look, um, you know, that way, that way I can maybe help to incorporate something that they may not have been thinking about or if you've got a certain thing they're going for that I can go in and, and help them develop that, um, you know, and, and get that to work within the comic space or whatever it may be. So it's, you know, all of it is, is uh, you know, a very fun process, again, just creating and doing stuff that, you know, um, I love to do all day. So uh, it's, it's great to, Experiment and you know, with these uh, types of projects and then learn. We got about uh, under an hour, so I'll, I'll be wrapping this up shortly. But I wanted to again bring up um, if there's any questions, uh, please definitely let me know. I want to make sure I can answer anything before we wrap today. And um, for, if for anyone who's just joining us now at the end of the stream, I'll be uh, uh, giving everyone access to some custom brushes uh, that everyone can use um, in Photoshop. Um, thanks to the team at Grub Brushes, who have been awesome to, to share some of my favorite brushes um, with everyone here on, on the stream today. So before we leave, I'll make sure that uh, I get that um, Link out one more time. That way, you can have access to that. And, and additionally, um, you know, my print sale running this weekend and merchandise stuff. There's all like all the pretty much the the, the p two pieces that were done previously are available as prints and uh, like merchandising. If you want phone cases, or throw pillows, any of that cool stuff. It's all available on, on sale for this weekend, and that'll be my uh, final sale of the year as I'm getting ready to get some new pieces um, released in January up to the site. And also, if you um, sign up on my site, SysTonyWashingtonArt.com, um, you uh, join my mailing list, and you also receive 20% off automatically off your first purchase. And uh, also, I'll, I'll reach out to all of the uh, uh, newsletter subscribers for for ideas for my next pieces and uh, do giveaways all the time um, of new art and uh, and various other things I give out music and you know all that kind of all that fun stuff so if you're interested definitely check that out As you can see, yeah, I'm normaling everything. Um, I used to stream a lot as I got into first learning Photoshop. It kind of pushes everything to white, and it kind of gets a little too washed sometimes. So I just wanted to do like you know mixing color like I normally would um, traditional medium, uh, but just bring that 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 type of technique into what I do in digital art. So. Um, it's really fun 
to go and go go on and do this kind of stuff too. So. I'm not really making any selections, as you can see. Sometimes I'll actually block an area out, so it's almost masked off from everything else. Almost like you know, doing like airbrushing, where you you have you know film that's masking off other areas. Um, but you know, for the uh, purpose of time, I want to make sure I can move through this uh, fairly quickly for everyone before we wrap today. So uh, I want to make sure that that's done for you guys. And uh, before we before we wrap, I'll do one more live piece today. Um, that way you can see in a few minutes. I have a brand new piece that's coming to the site. Um, and like I said, January, it's going to be adding, updating my landscape uh, print series. And um, definitely can show you at least a sneak peek of what it looks like and how I'm going with it. So I point that light on, oh, that's a little too close. I <laughs> point the light, um, you know, on the top end of the character, that way you can see um, what I'm doing, um, and uh, you know, I, I, again, I aim the light top down on the character so that light can dissipate across the planes of space, off the shoulders. Um, again, just add more depth uh, and, and to this stuff so you're able to, um, you know, get even more volume built into your character <clears throat> or or any any subject matter for that. For that again that matter and then uh, i would add color gels a lot of the time it's done in film and animation all the time um so i do a lot of that in, in my in my in my work i will um find a tone that will you know start to tie my color together uh, even more Maybe not that green, but we can definitely adjust it. I kind of get an idea of what I would do. And then I would um, mask out the line art. And then fade, I can paint that same technique I did with the sun in the beginning, where I just apply a layer mask. I can layer mask out some of the line art details. So it starts to fall into shape a little bit more with what I was doing with the with the underpainting. So it's not as present, so it's mainly just an outline. So if I'm doing like some rim lights or also I can load the layer and then use the liner as, as that key to get me to get those really sharp key lights that can you know, pop off the edge. Again, just keep a you know, direction of light in mind and how you want to do that. But um, you can go on the opposite side. Maybe there's a another color that's influenced on this side. Change that a little bit.
And so quickly, I'm you know, able to get some form and dropped into place. Um, you know, that way I can have this look across the entire piece. I'll go back to the final again. Um, so you can see what it looked like there. And I will uh, bring everything back on. I need to adjust these clouds again, but at least I can bring this file back. Regardless, I know that's a lot brighter. I just need to adjust my layers for these backgrounds. But you know, you can kind of get an idea again of what that would look like. Let me uh, go back to this one, and then again on him there. So you got again same principle. I just um, yeah a lot of just quick painting, and then I went in and just added like the rim lights a little bit more dramatic uh, on here, so I painted directly over the line art. Um, I mean, of course, you know, the liner is still here, but it's just painted over. Um, yeah, because that's the kind of look they were wanting to go for in the end. That's what we decided on doing. Um, so, but everything did start as line art, and then I went right on top of all, all of my line art and just painted it all in um, with all the stuff. So it was a lot of fun, uh, you know, doing this book cover for them. And, uh, so yeah, me, um, remaining time, I can... <laughs> One, uh, make sure any questions again uh, before I move off to the next piece. I can, I'll wait a couple seconds just in case you may have any questions before we move off. Yes, no. Okay, let me uh, go ahead and open up this current piece I'm working on. And that way we can, I can goof off with some photos and show um, you guys some techniques with that too. Okay, so um, this is one piece I just started a few days ago. Um, it's pretty much all, all going to be painted uh, with, uh, again, singular brush, um, and especially for the rock kind of stuff. Um, I uh, just started getting getting in you know, silhouettes that I liked and um, started, it, uh, the sketches were done very quickly in Photoshop. Um, I can, I think I still have that on here. So you can see it, actually, maybe. Yeah, it's, it was very loose um, sketches that I had done, um, but you know, I, I, I try to just get the basic idea down, and then I can start going in and painting and, and coloring, and um, you know. But uh, as I go going and do these types of pieces, I, I I I will sometimes have a palette in mind. Sometimes just need to experiment a little bit uh, to have the look that I want, um, and then you know, then I can. Yeah, go in and, and knock stuff out. But um, again, the uh, the photographer Julia Trotti, her curve uh, settings are so great that it, it makes stuff so much easier for me uh, to go in and, and just quickly get colors that I like um, and to sample uh, small, you know, varying you know, amounts of swatches. That way, I can color keep things within a, a very limited palette, so I don't have a million colors going all over a piece where it makes it very difficult to look around what's happening in a piece. I tend to, um, you know, try to, uh, you know, keep, again, limited palette, keep the focal point, you know, make sure that's present, make sure that the planes are, um, you know, value-wise will read right. Um, I, I can show you just a general, um, for the human saturation, take all the saturation out, you can see uh, what it would look like 
um, with this. So, you know, just my values, that's how my values will read um, very dark, mid, and then light. So, you know, I try to balance certain things out. Uh, the end will probably be a little bit brighter in this area. This that, that way these two don't compete too much, but I purposely put a, a, a darker shape behind this. So, you know, either way, it would still work in balance. But um, in the end, I want to make sure that the eye is right in this particular area. So I'll I'll make that influence and in painting with value at, at a, a, you know, I'm going straight with color, but I've got this, you know, here to keep me reminded of where I'm at on certain things because you can kind of get an idea of what it would look like as a black and white painting. If it can work here, it'd be, you know, it's, it makes it so much easier to add color. Um, but, you know, of course, I'm doing it difficult and just painting, <laughs> painting with color and applying, uh, you know, the, the value um, as just an adjustment layer. I, I, I can check and, and paint as I go. Um, so definitely recommend having at least that as one of your top options on, on your, your, your chain and your layers just to keep just values, um, or hue and saturation layer, uh, adjustment layer, um, just, you know, at the top that you can turn on and off, check your, check your painting as you go. Uh, that way you can make adjustments as you, as you paint and instead of, uh, doing it at the end and getting, you know, shocked that certain things don't work right on uh, value because it's so important for your eye to be able to, to, to make that kind of stuff out. So. Um, you know, again, I definitely uh, will recommend that always. So I will um, go ahead and paint some more. And the background, um, that is a combination of a couple of photos. Um, what I will do, I won't be using these in the final, but I wanted to be able to show since uh, we're in here uh, doing this stuff. Today, I wanted to be able to at least uh, experiment live with you all um, just to kind of see what stuff would look like um, and give you some ideas on what you can do um, as well in your in your work and, um, you know, experimenting with whatever you'd like to do within your, if you, if you like photos or if you don't like photos, it's, you know, it's completely fine, but I can give you at least some ideas of what you can do with them. Um, so I'll just grab... I've got a massive library of, of tons of textures uh, that I've collected over the years. So um, I will uh, just see the photo is pretty low resolution, but it's, it's all right. You can definitely bring it in and do some adjustments to that. I'll turn off the one that's underneath. And overlay this. So we can go through the options. So you can kind of get an idea of what it will look like. Um, so using the color that's underneath, you can get photo would just be affected in certain ways. Screen, it just pushes things closer to white. Um, you know, dodging is like heavy contrast um, with a bit of overlaying screen. Linear dodging, very similar to, you know, to the previous two I mentioned. Overlay, it would be heavy contrast but it uses that undercolor a lot uh to blend in with the photography that's been uh, on the top on the top layer and you can kind of get an idea of what all this stuff can look like so you may find something that just works um you know with a different option that you may be used to using i typically always overlay um it's just easiest for me and then i would adjust um you know the opacity down and then i would since this is very, very grainy, I'll, 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 I'll push this all the way back up so you can see it. Um, you can see this photo, is, it's, it's, it's definitely not, wouldn't be, it wouldn't work for me for a final output. I couldn't use something like that that's so grainy. And, and typically I like to paint as much as I can instead of just having this uh, pacing a photo moving on. Uh, I like to be able to you know, create a little bit more and then just use this painting as a springboard to be able to create a lot more with my art. So one, one thing I were typically, the first thing I always do when, it, when I see this kind of grain is go into filter, uh, noise and median. And I will just put the, that on, you know, the, the, the uh, sample area uh, just right there and I'll just boost it all up. And that way I can lose the grain and it looks, you know, it, it almost 
paint daubs the entire imagery. If you really go, you know, nuts with it, yeah, it, it takes all the definition out. Um, but you know, you find a good, you know, medium place uh, to where you don't have grain, but you still have some detail. Um, that's where I try to find that balance between the two. Because in the end, I'm going to be painting and applying my own, you know, um, paint strokes and all that kind of good stuff anyway. So I I tend to just leave it uh, in that area. And since I've already had some color underneath, these are the, this is the, this is the gray that I did underneath. Um, I already have those colors here. So what I would do is just start to paint. If I wanted to keep this photo, I would find um, ways for it to work within the composition. And uh, I would probably mask out some areas too, just because um, they might be a little, little too heavy um, on composition to where I'm starting to look at that area more than what's important, which is, you know, that central area where I'm going to have a figure standing in here. Um, so I will try to just knock out or use a layer mask to drop some of these areas out. And um, Oh, uh, sorry. I, I, I'm seeing a couple of questions. Sorry about that. Um, for, oh gosh, biggest influence. Um, holy cow. Uh, I mean, honestly, what got me really into digital art was Spawn, um, you know, going into for comics. But as a kid, it was Tron. Um, that's what got me inspired, period, to do art. Um, I, I mean, Star Wars definitely came out before it, and which is amazing, and the model, models were incredible, and the worlds were incredible, but something about Tron um, is what did it for me, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm sure I dated the heck out of myself right now, <laughs> which is fine, um, but uh, it was Tron, absolutely, that was the one that sparked um, how I started to do um, in art in general. I really, I was really... Um, you know, uh, captivated by the light cycle sequences, the disc fighting, the sound design, the graphics. I mean, back in the day, that was like, you know, top of the line CG, and it, it's still very cool to look at today. Um, but that's what got me really inspired. So, um, but Spawn was what got me to want to do comics for a living. Um, it was just, that was the first book I'd seen with digital coloring. So I had to figure out a way to do it. And I wasn't going to stop until I figured it out. So, um, you know, fast forward a few years later, you know, uh, <laughs> and uh, almost uh, almost thirty years later, at this point, as a professional, um, you know, uh, that's that's what it all started from was 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 that. So, um, so yeah, I appreciate the question, and um, so yeah, that was definitely what it was. So. And thanks to Dilla, I'm not sure what what you saw uh, that was looking cool, but I appreciate it. Um, Maybe it was the photo stuff I was slapping in here, but uh, but yeah, definitely. Uh, I appreciate it, man. So let's uh, manipulate this a little bit more. Oops, not like that. Um, soften some of that just a little bit because it's a little bit too much contrast for me. And um, I want to make sure that this stuff balances. So again, I'm you know very focused on that central area. Um, yeah. And you know, since you've got this layer, uh, a layer, you know, you can move up, down, wherever you need, um, as long as it's fitting within your canvas. Since it's locked in place, I can go through and you know, I do a little bit of anything um, at that point. So yeah, it makes it a very versatile, so if I need to make adjustments, or if I needed to bring in, for instance, I, I can go like, you know what, th those are working good, but I need more clouds. I need another section that's gonna work. Um, so yeah, let me find another one. So I would bring this in. Uh, you can definitely see some stuff is copywritten, so I, I this would not be my final art. Um, so I will close this out. This in the place. And have an overlay again, layer mask it out. Find what works.
uh, median out the areas that, you know, um, I, I won't want or don't want to have, you know, too, too grainy. And then, you know, use all of this again as a base. So, um, you know, now that that's there, you're like, you know, I like that, but I want to also float that and bring them on this side. You can do that too. You know, so it's very, um, yeah, you want to experiment. You know, I, I, I highly recommend just, um, you know, experimenting as much as you can and, and finding, you know, what works, uh, you know, for you. Um, you know, it's important that, um, I'll close this down. And uh, transform all this stuff. So now I've got that over in this area. So, I mean, that's, you know, very quickly you can have a good base to work from, um, even though I, these won't be in the actual final piece, but just for the sake of this, you know, for, for demoing it, I can definitely use all three of these. And then I would just paint on top of them. Um, since I have, I know my general light direction would be, these do have light that's coming from behind them. So I would need to make an adjustment that would fit in front of them or, you know, or closer to, you know, uh, painting out, out on top of them. So I would make another, another layer on top of them and then start to paint in where the light would be based on uh, what I'm doing with that middle ground piece of rock. And I, I could use, if you, know, if you didn't want to use a brush, like a standard brush, you could go in and like, for instance, I've got concept brushes. So if I didn't want to use just a standard brush, I could go use clouds, um, an actual cloud brush. Um, and paint in, I was right on top of this with, with an actual cloud brush and, you know, build and build out more and, uh, continue to, to create volume again, at the painting, the photos that were there are, aren't going to be there in final. I just use them. As a, as a base to kind of see where the composition is going to work. And then I can paint right on top of them so they would not uh, be there in the final work um, at all. I, I, I tend to always do as much as I can to make sure it's not 100% just a photo, especially with some artwork that is for sale or any of that kind of stuff. I try to avoid um, just slapping a photo on something and, and, and putting it on a, you know, a, a print site or, or, you know, for sale at a show or any of that kind of stuff. So try to paint as much as I absolutely can to, to differentiate any, any inspirational type of stuff that I've used over the years. Um, so I highly recommend that and that, that you try to find a way to make it your own, um, you know, instead of just, uh, copy paste and <laughs> say print, I don't recommend doing that. Um, you know, but yeah, this stuff is, you know, you get, and you get a lot of practice just, um, you know, constantly trying to find ways of, uh, improving what you do as a, as an, as a, an artist. Again, I'm starting to see some competing stuff happening, so I will tone down some of this stuff. Again, I, I kept it fairly minimal on the painting that I'm currently doing. So if I turn this off, you can kind of see it. Um, I have very, you know, I've painted in some new clouds. I have the base and uh, using um, a cloud brush and a couple of grep brushes, I can soften up areas and then have my, you know, Im Im impressions on things. Um, one thing that I can also do if I wanted to do, use the actual form of something I've painted, um, one thing I can, I can do is copy it, select all or copy, make a new alpha channel. And um, I'm going to move this up here. So it's got a combination of brush strokes um, and all that kind of good stuff. I'm going to... Um, 
Okay, the first is shoot this out. And I'm gonna um, make this an area to where I can actually uh, I'm gonna bring in, change the values on this. So I'm gonna use the darker values as a, as a way of painting. And the, the gray value would be transparency and then white would not even be affected at all. So um, I'm gonna, you can see it here in the quick mask how, how it's now reddish, turn that off. Um, but now you can see, I'm gonna um, use that alpha channel to create another color. So um, I go, I'll go on top of this. And using that alpha channel, I'm able to, you can see how it would be go back this way. It's above my original clouds. So I can go in and alter that color on its own um, where I can have now values. Um, or if I, if I can track the light, you'll see that the selection gets smaller and smaller. Oops, let me change this real quick. Um, I'll make it smaller and smaller. I can keep tapping and contracting on it. The, the selection gets tighter and tighter. And then I can, you know, paint even more areas if I wanted a certain contrast um, to it. If I wanted to just global, just do it once, and it's going to be a lot softer. But the more I con contract on that selection, that it gets tighter and tighter, more detail is visible. And again, you've got opacity control. So you can take that down, that saturation view you can change. You know, and just by using the existing, existing, um, you know, underpainting, I can use that as its own layer and do adjustments that way. Um, or if I want to move it a little bit, I can move it off, you know, left or right, and up and down probably won't work because it'll, it'll start to see where that line is creased. Um, but you can use that anyway, you know, as it, I make custom brushes that way, um, you know, bring in textures that way. So for instance, I wanted so for, if I wanted to use an actual photo, um, I can do, I'll bring in another one. I can show you that. Let me find one that will help with that. Uh, let's try this one. Copy it. I'm going to bring it in. Um, instead of making it a layer, I'm just going to go straight to alphas. And you see this is pretty small. It's okay. I'll make this larger first before doing an alpha. So I got that. And, um, uh, so your question about uh, on a previous piece you talked about how you do things to help concept team and ideas that would maybe not even thought of before to, to get any reimbursement for that kind of contribution. Um, as far as reimbursement, um, not necessarily. I mean, they. They did take care of me um, on when I was doing stuff on Turtles since um, uh, I, they were very gracious when I, we had the premiere, they flew out um, part of the team uh, out to Hong Kong to watch the movie uh, out there with uh, Studio uh, HK. And they flew my wife and I out um, round trip, put us in a hotel for free. We stayed there for about two, almost two weeks. Um, you know, so if, I mean, if any contribution that, that would have been, you know, that was super awesome of them. Um, but outside of that, not really. I mean, we, it, it was, you know, I, I, 
um, deal, dealing with concept and working with a team, we, we all just want to work together to figure out a way to amplify what we all do as artists. Um, you know, so uh, it was, you know, I was, I, I was more than happy and honored to just work with such amazingly talented people. Um, so, you know, they, they, as far as like a reimbursement kind of a thing, it would have been more just all of us. Um, it was very cool for us to work together uh, and look and learn as artists together on for two years making that film. So, um, you know, the, the, the it was very awesome for them to take care of you know, me and, and my wife on the trip and all that stuff. But primarily it was just that learning experience, you know, have, being a, that was my first major motion picture at the time. And, um, you know, to be able to have that kind of knowledge around such crazy talented people, um, you know, it was nuts. And yes, I did get credit. Uh, I am in the credits on the film. So um, I'm part of the, I don't, I actually forgot which credit I got on the film. Um, I, it should have been color. I know color is one of them. <laughs> so it's been a minute. So yeah, if you happen to see TMNT, it was, came out in 2006, I think. Um, in the credits, I am there. Uh, I'm, it, may, it may have been under VizDev or color or concept is one of those um, I was on. So um, yeah, it was a minute ago. So I did get credit. I just don't remember exactly what the credit was. Yeah. Yeah. Why would, why would people be giving you credit anyway? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, right. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just Jason causing trouble. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely. Uh, but, uh, let me, uh, but yeah, I mean, they, they took care of me. I, I, there was zero complaints for me. I, I was just thrilled to be a part of that process. So, um, yeah, those those guys are awesome. Unfortunately, this fortunate studio did close shortly after. I think I was on production on because they had me working on a Zelda movie and a uh, Gotchaman or Battle of the Planets movie at the same time. I left Turtles um, as they were wrapping animation i had left to start working on other stuff for, for the company and i was like doing uh, concept on a zelda movie unfortunately never came out and i was working with at the same time with the gotcha team um a lot of the same artists i worked with on turtles were on that too and we were working together on that and unfortunately just uh neither of them came out and and i think astro boy did come out um but what well, astro did they they, they they redid it they redid astro boy uh huh. Yep, that came out ooh, 2009, eight, something like that. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah, I, I unfortunately did not work on Astro Boy, but um, I know I know they had you know some awesome, awesome, uh, awesome talented people on that one too. But, yeah. So now that I've got that one and oh, the same same technique, it's now I'm just gonna you know bring it in as its own layer. Mm -hmm. And paint right on top of this again. Um, put it down here. But just using that selection, almost like it, treating it like a brush. <laughs> yeah. So just using alpha channels. A lot of the times, people don't ever use them. So I was like, no, nah, you could do a lot of cool stuff with an alpha channel, um, and you know, make it, make it, in, 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 and add it as a layer. And still have that, you know, control that you can go in and shift things and change colors and, you know, all that stuff. So I, I, I always just recommend experimenting as much as possible, um, uh, you know, at, when, it, when it comes to this process. Because, yeah, I, I, I want to discover things as I go. So it keeps things exciting and, and, you know, fresh always to goof off and experiment in and, and the software packages that we've got. So. Uh, I encourage everyone who's into Photoshop and watching the stream to go in and try that. It doesn't have to even be Photoshop, you know, any, any software that you're comfortable with, just experiment, and, uh, you know, learn stuff as you continue to, to get, you know, gain, um, you know, confidence within these software packages. And you never know what you might stumble across just by you know, goofing off on that one particular day. You'll see something brand new that can change the way you, your workflow is. So, um, I definitely recommend just you know trying and experimenting as much as possible. And uh, we'll try. I'll try to overlay in some, even though again I won't be using it on the final. But it's, I think it's important to show what can be done. 
Um, I'll, bra I'll grab like some rock textures. Uh, in fact, you know what I have? I think I might have that paper I was talking about earlier on Skeletor. Uh, let me... I still can't get get over the fact that they have a uh, a He Man uh, a universe or, or a He Man convention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, <laughs> it's great. No, uh, <laughs> they've uh, they've actually changed it now. So no oh. longer it's no longer in California. It's in Ohio now. And so you got so you got to fight Ohio to get there now. I didn't go last year. Um, or no, this year I didn't go. This year I was like, nope, I'm I'm not traveling out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but uh, it is there again next year. Um, yeah. So if I do, I mean, but it's no longer He Man. It's everything. So you, Ninja Turtles, Voltron, whatever, any of that '80s nostalgic kind of stuff. Okay. It's 100 percent that now. So it's cool. Right. I, I I you know I loved it when it was all He Man and and. Shira and stuff, it was great. I mean, I worked on those comics for, for quite some time, so it was awesome to, uh, um, you know, <laughs> just, just, just create He Man pinups all day. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, it, it was fun. I, I loved it. Uh, but I'm trying to see if I have, let me see. I might have it here. I'm trying to, I know we only got about less than 15 minutes left. Um, so I'm trying to quickly see if I've got it. Uh, and as we uh, wrap up, any last questions? Uh, I want to make sure. Um, you know, that can help with anything. Uh, maybe. Oh, we, we should probably start talking about... Um, you give a giveaway, don't you? You, you? Yeah, I've got a giveaway. And I think you're going to do brushes, right? Yep, I'll show that as, as I find this file. So anyone who just joined us on the stream and would like some free custom brushes, um, the uh, my partners over at Grub Brushes have given me a link to provide to everybody. Just go to grubbrushes.com forward slash Washington and you get access to six of my favorite brushes. Um, I use them in the stream today, at least at least one of them, Flux Ever. Um, but the other ones are equally powerful. Um, I highly recommend that you, uh, you know, experiment as much as I was today. And, um, you know, it, maybe it'll help in your in your workflow. But, um, yeah, I definitely wanted to pass it back to you so you can have your giveaway. I think that that's... Uh, that's yeah. that one. It's a nice one, so. I'm um I'm also putting um I guess www.gretbrushes.com and I'm putting that in the chat box now. There we go. There it is. So everybody should now <laughs> everybody should now have grip brushes access. Tony, that's wonderful. Thank you. Oh no, thank you guys wonderful. for all and shoot, thank you for having me and thank you everyone who joined in. So I, uh, I figured for our last meeting of the year, the special Christmas gift for the for the user users group out there, Photoshop users out there. Well yep, yep. Anthony Washington on. They'll love it. No, I have well, some brushes. Gray's got comments here. Let's see. There you go. Let's do that. You yeah, if, if, yeah, if I miss comments, please, I, I, I can scroll through with you as I'm going through here. But um, I, I just want to quickly see if I have anything I can show before we get out of here today. And Yvonne, thank you so much. Thank you all for being here. Oh, we got a bunch of people on here. Um, uh, thank you. Glad you liked the presentation. This is great. Yeah, thank you. Is it, is it uh, Alicidra? Alicidra? Commander Root, great to see you again. Cimarron, welcome. Cynthia, Anna, well, thank you for being here. Discord stream community, I guess I'm not going to what welcome. Uh, you got the drop snat uh, and um, and good good tribble, I guess that that is welcome. Um, we got the um, uh, Holitz 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 Carmens. Uh, I don't know, I, I killed that one. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I B Wilson, I B Wilson, welcome. J D Dill Hens, 
I, I guess Jay Dillhens SD, welcome. McNonsense, great to see you. Um, um, Miramano, welcome. Small Streams SD community, uh, welcome. And Yvonne 2023, welcome. There's more on here, but they're not showing up here in the chat. Got but it. Thank you all for being here. Hey, we're going to do a, a giveaway. So this, this is how we're going to do it. Um, let me go get my notepad. And what I'm going to do in this notepad, let's go grab it, notepad. All right. So uh, let me go over here and share my screen now. Um, there we go. Cool. All right. So on this notepad, I'm going to type in a number from one to 100. And whoever gets closest to the number will win a free subscription to a one year subscription to the Creative Cloud. That's the Adobe Creative Cloud. That's everything Adobe owns. OK, um, everything but the substance suite um, you, you'll get access to. So I'm going to put a number in here right now. And what you guys are going to do is you're going to type in your number into the chat box. So do so now. So I'm going to pick a number. I'm going to go with one through 100. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So numbers are coming in. All right. Let's see what we've got here. So from one through 100, put a number into the chat. So the closest person to my number will get the one year subscription to the creative cloud. All right. I'm assuming people are still putting their good numbers are coming in. Just got one from Mac nonsense. Let's see. Uh, as as the numbers are coming in, I see the question about AI art and uh, yeah, it, it's it's not it's not a it, to me it's not that I mean it's I I I I knew it was coming at a certain point. I mean we 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 all should have expected AI art to make a main you know mainstream kind of thing at some point. Um, you know we've seen hints of it within heck Photoshop alone. There's already been you know content aware filters and. All that kind of stuff that's AI based, but yeah, now it's one hundred percent. You just type a sentence, and now you have art. Um, I, I don't personally use it. I, I I try to paint as much as I can. I do know friends of mine who do use it for like, which which I think is a great idea um, to get ideas um, and to and to kind of get you know, if you're thinking of something and wanting to get a good quick idea to put a mood board together, they'll mood board out all, all, all their different key prompts. And then they'll have a good representation of ideas to work from. I think that's great. Um, you know, but using it, using AI art as just straight up final production, I just, I would never use that ever. Um, I, I, I like to paint as much as I can and experiment as much as I can. So using AI art like that, I, I, I am not, I'm not into it all. So. All right. So. We're getting ready to pick the winner. I, I mean, I, I, I am not. I, I mean, AI does not bother me. I mean, I find it as a way of 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 uh, um, using it to create inspiration. Yeah. But, uh, for, in a way that maybe you never thought off thought off before. Yeah. Um. Absolutely. Cool. Essence just put his number. Okay. So are we ready to go? So everybody put their number in from one one hundred. Mandala didn't put anything in here, and I know he's here. So what's up? <laughs> yeah, man, get in there. <laughs> what, what's Mandala? We think he thinks he's better than the rest of them. Yes, yeah, like, I'm not putting a number. I don't want free Adobe Suite for right. here. <laughs> I don't need no Adobe. <laughs> <laughs> we have to pick on Jason. <laughs> I mean, shoot, I wish I could jump in, but I know I can't. So. <laughs> All right, so Mandala. Okay, here we go. So here is my number, and I see the winner already. I'm pulling it over. Oops, I should have made it bigger, huh? So something like, um, not ah, matter. So my number is 75. Nice. All right, my number right. is 75. So the the winner is going to be. Um, well, I just had it here in front of me. Here it's uh, DJ Arnold. I guess it is. You are the winner 
of the Creative Cloud one year subscription. So this is what I need you to do. I need you to put, I'm going to, I'm going to give you my email, my personal email address now. Email me. Let me know that you are the winner. Email me uh, so that so that I have your email address and I'll send that on to Adobe. They will reach out to you. Okay. They'll reach back out to you and let you know, uh, welcome you to the Creative Cloud community. And they will um, give you a, a license number, a license code. Okay. And I'm going to go type in the rest of my email address here. Cool. All right, go on and email me that your email me now. You should have that there. So, um, thank you everybody for being here. This is great, great attendance. Uh, a lot of great questions. Thank you, Tony. You're wonderful as usual. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, oh. This has been recorded. So, if you signed up through Eventbrite, I will send the recording to you through Eventbrite. Um, but uh, if you are, let me actually um, share this with you guys. Let me kind of pull this on over. We are the Photoshop Users Group. So, I'm going to come over here to Facebook here, and you'll find us on Facebook, Photoshop Users Group. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the direct link to the Photoshop Users Group. Facebook page, putting it right here in the chat box. There we go. Come over, join us. Um, how many? Actually, David, you're here. I believe you're still here. I'd be wizard, you're still here. Um, how many members do we have there now? Actually, it should say right here somewhere. Um, there are, oh, I forget it. They move things around. Facebook changes a little bit. They move stuff around. I forget where to look. But quite a few thousand in here. So we're, we're I think we're one of, one of the largest Photoshop uh, um, user group uh, um, members here or, or, or Facebook page. Also, yeah, 33,000. Yeah, 33, yeah, yeah 33,000. Okay, good. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Buster, Buster X666. Um, so we are an official sanctioned Adobe users group. So Adobe recognizes us, recognizes us as one of their official user groups. So um, being here means you're legit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we have we have monthly meetings. Our next meeting won't be until after the new year. Um we don't. We we usually go. We usually start in February. The the you, you know, we normally meet the first Saturday of the month. So our next meeting will be probably the first Saturday in February. I usually don't do one in January because the first week of January is is kind of like you know the New Year's holiday and not a lot of people are still out of town or getting back in town. So I'm, I I I want to push the meeting to February and we'll we'll, we'll start there. Um. We our first meeting normally has to do with our, our judges roundtable discussion. So, for an international anybody who's interested in, in or has been exhibiting your work and or submitting your work to international competitions and, and fairs and stuff like that, we usually have a bunch of judges who are part of the this one of the largest actually I think it's the largest photography and digital arts competition um, is uh, the San Diego County Fair. So I get a bunch of judges there where we actually do a dry round of, of competitions and, and discussions as to how they judge and so forth. So we'll probably start the year off, the new year off with that. And then we're going to go on from there. Um, and we'll have a variety of uh, a talent coming in, uh, sharing what they do with photography. So if you guys have any suggestions for me as to what you would like to see or maybe whom you would like to see presenting here, uh, please let me know. My email address, I just type, typed in here, okay? So go on and, and reach out to me. Um, where, did, where did it go? Did, hopefully, did my email address show up here in the chat box? Ah. I don't know. Uh, exactly. The yeah. Facebook one, but, uh, but yeah, definitely. The Facebook one? Okay, let me go put my personal yeah. email address yeah. in here. Yeah. I, it was supposed to be... I thought I, I did. I just typed it in, which is kind of strange. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna go through Twitter. Oh, there it is, right there. I do, right there. 
That's it. Okay, I'm gonna put my I'll, just for your convenience. I'll put it. I'll place it in here again. So reach out to me and and share with me who who you would like to see, and send me as much information as possible. You no, know, the oh email, the website address, or something like that. Uh, yes, saw it. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, DJ Arnold. Arnold. Um, all right, that's it, guys. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you so much again, Tony. Um, I, no, I can't thank you enough, and I will be coming to your studio. Yeah, no, man, you let me know whenever. And then anyone again is in, is in the San Diego area. I'm down here at 1835 Imperial Avenue at 1835 Studios. So okay, um, feel free to come down anytime. And I, I appreciate you having me on again. You know, and happy holidays to everyone. I put Again, you, we have a suggestion already to say more Tony. Uh, <laughs> Can't get too much of Tony. Oh, no, I'd love to come back. It's always <laughs> always fun, man. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy doing it. So, no, if you have me back, you know I'm coming back. So, <laughs> all right. Thank you all again. Bye. Have a Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. We'll see you next year. Absolutely. Take care, guys. Okay. Bye. See you. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is.